Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Counter-Strike fans across the globe, welcome to the HLTV Awards 2022 presented by One Expert. Tonight concludes the 10th iteration of the highly coveted HLTV Top 20 in CSGO. A momentous occasion accompanied by Counter-Strike royalty to celebrate the best of the best that 2022 had on offer. We are coming to you live from space in Stockholm, Sweden. And as you can see, these beautiful faces on the screen right now, I am Chad Sponge Virtual. I'll be the host of the panel here. We do have Veracity and Maniac on the stage. And uh, well, of course, alongside me for this evening, I have Striker and Prof, as well as Parla, who can bring us some interviews with all those guests uh, that will be joining us. Now, look, gentlemen, it is great to have you here this evening. I wanted to go with HLTV confirmed, but in suits. It was too close to bananas in pajamas and uh, <laughs> didn't get through Didn't get through the uh, the PR department, or I guess marketing. Uh, Prof, yeah. you, you played a big role in making all this happen here this evening, mate. Yeah, is that a question? Well, my statement, and I wanted you to kind of jump on it and be like, yeah, Chad, I it's did. Been a, it's been a couple of uh, very exciting and busy months, I would say, to bring this together. But just seeing all the people come in, everyone like dressed nicely, I feel so content. Mm. I'll, I won't say happy yet. It. Let's uh, get to the end of the evening and then I can release all of the positive emotions to the fullest. Definitely a vibe uh, now that we do have everybody starting to roll on in downstairs. We've got some pre-drinks going on. Everybody getting in their suits, looking hot to trot. Now, uh, Striker, you put your haircut up on the internet the other day. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was, was not a good idea, was it? Was the response what you were looking for? Not exactly. Yeah. I, I was like, maybe I'm going to get a little bit more support. You know, mm. These are people who follow me, of course. And uh, yeah, I, that was a little bit unexpected. To be honest, you did a humble brag of having a girlfriend. So that kind of, that's a win. That's a W right there to start <laughs> off. So I, I, it's nice. And I, I really like Gomez's drawing. He went in detail. That's right. Your former manager. I see why you had him, why you held him around. He's very diligent. The guy knows what he's talking about. And he, I think he just explained what, what's problematic with the haircut. But at the same time, you look amazing. So you both look fine. fantastic here this evening. Very very dapper in your suits. You've got your ties on. You've yeah. got even a pocket square over I there. Got, uh, I got a maniac flower going on right Yeah, here. he's, uh, look, once people see maniac later this evening, they're oh, going to see what he's rocking. Oh, uh, he's definitely got something like a bit of a show stomper, as it were. But we are here at the Hedgehog TV Award Show for 2022 as we kicked it off. And uh, look, there's a lot going down this evening boys, right? We've got uh, panel awards, we've got the HLTV awards, we've obviously got uh, the number one player of the year to give away, which is why I'm sure most people will be tuning in tonight. But uh, that's the thing, where, where do we start? We've got 12 awards over the whole evening, if I can count correctly, right? Six of the panel, six of the HLTV awards. Yeah. So you guys want to, you double checking the maths, spreadsheet man? I didn't actually check the maths, but I'm, I'm going to believe you. It's pretty basic maths, yeah. right? You, Don't it, do math on broadcast. Uh, yeah, no, that's the honest. number one rule. It'd be hard to mess that one up, but obviously we've got a couple of trophies with us here. There's a lot that's gone into this evening, and uh, a lot of people who have turned out, there's already been some shots on social media going on. You've got Martin out there. Apparently, he's the paparazzi taking photos with everybody. But here you can see uh, some of those awards. We've got for the Panel Awards, Opener of the Year, Closer of the Year, Anchor of the Year, Orp of the Year, In-Game Leader of the Year, and, of course, Coach of the Year to round that out. Now, uh, we'll get into a little bit more detail, but uh, that's as the show kicks on, and that will be the first awards that we will be presenting here this evening. Uh, but that's an interesting one. That's a new addition to the awards, Striker. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the first time that we're doing it, and we're doing it in a bit of a special way where we want this to be a team that actually can work on paper. And there sure. was a lot of lot that went into this, kind of deciding how exactly is a team built. And of course, like every team is kind of unique, and so we had to have like some conversations with pros about what they think about this, you know. Even change some definitions. Yeah. Uh, opener, closer, anchor. Uh, anchor, you know, we flirted with yeah. for a while there, but traditionally, I think like when you're talking about closer, with talking more lurker. With opener, we're talking entry fragger. So why the change in definition, Prof? What's we been going to on? We want to move away from these like preconceived notions and like the roles that existed. When you think about lurker, you think about happy, you think about get right, and the game changed since then, right? Mm. That's okay. why we want to introduce some new terms that fit the game now more than, than the old ones. We, we don't really have the 4-1 happy on one side, four people going to take map control, right? It is more fluid, uh, more hybrid roles, and uh, the closer is just like a late round player, right? It doesn't have to be necessarily always last in the round. Maybe it's just like working the separate sides of the map and doing different things, right? Uh, and as the, the name Panel Awards, right, uh, there's 31 experts who are involved in uh, voting for this. And we'll, we'll t as I mentioned, we'll talk more about this later. Uh, but so you've, you've not just kept it to HLTV people alone, uh, which is what the HLTV awards are for. So this is kind of getting the votes of players, right? You've obviously yeah. got uh, some pundits, right, in terms of you know, the commentators or analysts. And of course, uh, some HLTV journalists are in the mix right there. Uh, and we do have, well, the more traditional, I guess, HLTV. TV Awards. I mentioned in the intro just there that this is the 10th iteration of the top right. 20 for CSGO. have to give a shout out to Peta, of course, uh, the man who kind of started all this. And the father like, of the top 20. We could, it, yeah. it goes back a long way, right? Uh, now, just with the HLTV Awards for this evening, we've got Rookie of the Year, Highlight of the Year, Women's Team of the Year, Team of the Year, Women's Player of the Year, and 
player of the year. So a bit of a mouthful there, but uh, back to Peta, right? So he started this uh, an awful long time ago, right? Yeah. We're going back to the, what, 2010, 2011? 2010 was the first iteration okay. where it was in 1.6, uh, and that was the year that Markloff won. Uh, and okay. Then Neo won the next one in 2011. Then we had the break here. And then from 2013, we started CSGO. That was the first full year of CSGO. So that's where we restarted the top 20. And this is the 10th iteration. Okay. Well, uh, we've got a couple of other members here we're going to be checking in with. And Parla is one of them. He's ready with an interview uh, to bring to everybody. What is going on, everybody? The HLTV Award Show 2022. My name is Parla, and right now I'm stood next to a legend of the game, a Sweden native. Of course, it's Get Right. Get Right, how are you doing, mate? I'm doing all good. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. So it's going to be an interesting night, and hopefully, it's going to be cool people winning their awards. Talking about awards, obviously, you're here for the good times and the vibes, but you were picking up some medals. Talk to us about that. Well, I had a couple of uh, forgotten medals and MVP awards and, I mean, best player awards that I never actually got to receive before. So finally, after so many years, I actually got to pick them up. And uh, it's quite hilarious because he reminded me like, yeah, do you, have you seen the simple and cyber picture when they had so many? I'm like, I actually forgot about it. They're like, yeah, it's going to look similar to like, because you actually have that many. I'm like, oh, OK, do I really have that many? And then it was like 14, 15 or something like that on stock in each other. So it was pretty hilarious in that way because I, I forgot about it a little bit because it's uh, too many years ago. If you forgot about them, what was it like to pick them up? Were there any specific emotions or feelings, Tote? Uh, to be honest, not really. <laughs> kind of, I, I haven't really thought about it. I mean, it was basically like less than five minutes ago, so I haven't really thought about it. And directly after that, I was like, hey, you have to speak to me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I have no thought process yet. So maybe if you caught me, caught me in a couple of hours, maybe I have a different uh, answer to that. And how was it to be here at the award show just in general? Because you've been involved in Counter-Strike for so long. You had have a story playing career, of course, since retired. What's it like to be an at an event like this that sort of commemorates everything about CS with a focus on the previous year of the game? I mean, the thing is like, I still always think about the past. Like I always go way back before even CSGO was here and 1.6 was my game to play. Like I think about those times when Counter-Strike was in beta already, when I was like eight, nine years old playing the game for the first time. And I said to my parents, basically like, one day we're gonna sit in arenas and playing. And you know, of course parents are supportive and they laughed a little bit and like, yeah, sure buddy. And then, you know, many, many years later, it became a reality and I'm just being so happy and thankful for being part of that journey. And I mean, my journey hasn't ended in a way either because I'm still around and I'm doing my own thing. So I'm just having a blast and it's just so cool to be a part of the whole journey. Like, who would have thought? I mean, apparently Chris, when he was eight, nine years old, thought about it and thought it was going to be a reality. So who knows who the next 20 years looks like. And what about friends here then, Get Right? Anyone that you haven't seen in a while that you're looking forward to seeing? Uh, I mean, I had the pleasure to go to Brazilian Major. That wasn't too too long ago, but I haven't met uh, Neo and Pasha and Snacks and those guys in a long time. And for, for people who don't remember those times, but way back in 1.6, me and Forrest, my partner in crime, and for uh, Neo who played with Taz, for example, in a long time, we, we battled out for many, many years. So. It's gonna be a little bit banter between each other and like, you know, be happy to see each other because it's been many, many years we've seen each other. So I'm really looking forward to see those people, but also the rest, like everyone is so friendly and welcome every time that you see them. So it's always nice to see familiar faces and it's cool to be always being welcoming with open arms still. So I, I really enjoy that. Always a pleasure to chat, pleasure to have you here. If there's anything else that you'd like to say to everybody watching at home, Tote, now is the time. <laughs> Follow your dream. That's it. Basically, straightforward. Just believe in it, and no matter what anyone says about your dream, screw them. Go with it. And you're going to stand there with the MVP award or winning something cool or being an inspiration for the next kid in your block or whatever it is in the world. So follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. I'm laughing because there's people, we're literally in front of a, like a glass thing, and there's people getting very excited seeing you. And yeah, I'm excited to have you here, mate. Pleasure as always.
Some great words from Get Right there. Uh, you know, follow your dreams, gentlemen. And look, uh, well, look, sure, we've all had many a dream here in the Counter Strike landscape. But Get Right's dream, once upon a time, was probably to be holding all those MVP medals that he has on social media. He needs a semi trailer to take them all home. So, uh, yeah, look, uh, Prof. Well, he got a lot of awards to pick up today, mate. Yeah. Retroactively awarded. Yeah, I mean, he is kind of the inspiration for us to actually do all of these medals that we didn't produce back in the day right because when we started awarding them 2012 it wasn't as big everything wasn't as big as it was now right we didn't start with making medals we just started announcing the players and stuff like that and then uh one i think this was a year ago year and a half ago he had like a the 3d model on his stream he's like i have this on my stream in the in the video on the overlay but i don't have the real medal <laughs> hey guys can you figure something out and we're like maybe we could yeah you know so we went back to 2012 figured out all of the mvps top 20s produce the medals and now we're here with all the all the players like get right forest neo jw picking up all of their stuff and uh, i mean some of the fixtures are already out on social media you can find it on hltv on twitter or hltv org on uh, on instagram if you want uh but it's also going to be coming a lot more is going to be coming on the website soon so it's uh, it's pretty cool okay so hltv needs to thank get right for a lot of extra work yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like 200 medals, I think, or something like that. Jeez. It's something crazy that's including the top 20s. In those is games. mine lost in the mail to do with the Titan game, or ah. is that going to become player of the match know, greatest, greatest performance of all player time? Player of the match, yeah. Maybe like a t-shirt or something. Yeah, okay. All right. Wow. Okay, shooting me down right there. Thanks, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, now, as we were talking about, right, we do uh, have the, the main awards, right? Highlight, rookie, team. Uh, we went over that, right? But uh, I was having a look, and we've gone over a lot of the top 20 so far. On the plane, as I've flown over here, I'm making sure I was... Look, I'll be honest, I was watching... Are you, are you right now oh jesus i've been doing i've been doing it all the time but now that we're live i don't know if i'll smash it out look at me look me in the eyes you're not gonna jame yuri spinks frozen bit yakinda hunter rain blame twists stown caserado rops monacy brokey nico axel and then the final three tonight i was doing it honestly i was oh look we've got uh some of our lovely guests here in the background we've got a bit of hawker dinko and henry g uh but it's starting to fill up out here if they could get a boost going on then we could see them but not right now look did i smash it i think i smashed it i was following along and i i did remember it i wanted to make sure i had this down to an absolute t because for every counter-strike player at home and i'm not talking about the professionals i'm talking about everybody who lives and breathes and loves this game this right here is infamy this is what everybody looks at and goes these are the best counter-strike players in the world right when jks was on his comeback time and he's here justin you're a top 20 player two years you know get no one can take that away from you this is a huge deal right and and i think it's kind of struck me now that we're here and i can see all these beautiful faces and all these people that we know and that we, we get to see all the time this is a big deal. This is the top 20 players of a year of Counter-Strike. This game that we all love and, uh, you know, we, we, we sink in for 365 days a year. So this is great. It's fantastic to what be here. What do you here. think of those guys is most happy with uh, his placement this year? Out of Ooh. the ones that are that are out so far. I feel like Monacy is probably up there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Probably Raleigh Monacy up there. I think Kay uh interview, I, I found it very nice. Like, he made some comment about just pushing himself so far just to, to leave that legacy for the upcoming players, right? Mm -hmm. He wasn't doing it just for for K Serato, he's doing for for the K Serato's to come, right? Yeah. To be the inspiration like Fallen was for other people and for like Get Right and Neo as he was like Get Right Now in the interview talking about following their dreams, right? He is the guy that's pushing it for, for the next generation. Yeah, and sure. Funnily enough, K Serato is kind of always the guy who like whenever I see him, he's like, where's my medal? Because I've, I've, I've handed a few to him, either the top 20s or some MVPs, like at some of the past majors, and so like he's he's definitely one of those guys who's going to be really happy. Well, we do have a, another interview with Paula. Maybe Caserados here. Paula, who have you got? We good? All right. Shiro and Axel, ladies, gentlemen, everyone at home, guys, how are you doing? Uh, okay. Too much. All right, Axel. Too much. How are you doing? Okay, man? very good. Uh, we're just excited to be here, and uh, we're just enjoying uh, this time. Are you going to say anything, Shiro, or just enjoying the camera time? Uh, <laughs> okay. Axel, I will focus my attention on you, but it's a yeah. pleasure to have Shiro here as well. Also, uh, you've got one of your managers here. Is this going to end up in the vlog, or what's happening here? He's just helping us and uh, maybe doing some good work for us. And uh, yeah, he just making some recording. <laughs> Axel, mate, I have to ask you, address the elephant in the room. Number one rifle in the world mate what was it like when you found out that that was the case for you uh, i'm very excited just uh, it's a very good achievement in my life and i hope i will uh, continue this uh, 
work and uh, I will be the best rifle every year. <laughs> that will be hard. Do you think you can do it back to back 2023 as well? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Wicked. And so, guys, are you looking forward to the event? Of course, the room is packed now here at Space. Uh, free drinks, free food. Are you having a good time? Yeah, we have a good time. All good, all good. Hey, all good. Everybody, Shiro and Ags, our pleasure to have you here. Enjoy the show. Well, Shiro's still in the running, gentlemen. He's still uh, one of our top three tonight for yeah. the top 20. So uh, a man of few words, but it is good to have Axel there to, to give his. Palace bang on, top rifler of the year. That's pretty crazy for uh, Axel, right? He's still a young lad, cloud nine, top of the pops. Uh, do you think him being number four was a... I'm asking if it's a surprise, mate. You know what's going on. You know how this all <laughs> opens the charts. If anything, I was one the part of deciding it this year quite like uh, hands-on. So Rigged, of course. It wasn't necessarily a very very big surprise to me. Uh, I mean, I feel like that that one was one of the, the ones, even from what I was looking at predictions, I think people kind of expected that sort of a range maybe four or five people were talking a little bit about like how does nico fit into this conversation and things like that mm. um and so like i think i think that's that's pretty much where people even expected yeah. it to be pretty fair yeah i mean uh, obviously he had some cloud nine went under some uh, scrutiny in the last part of the year i feel like after the real major the opportunity the whole that imperial had situation there, everything and then maybe axel oh he was he isn't performing that well but you can't really take away the first part of the year especially dallas where he was the mvp like that was there we saw like the peak exile mm. we also saw maybe not when he doesn't show his peak right it can be sometimes difficult for cloud nine but overall over the whole year as a rifler i think he had an did an amazing job oh yeah and uh, the ranking definitely reflects that yeah he actually had had was number one in one very key statistic which is uh, his play against top five teams and essentially like a lot of that was phase he was just amazing against phase he was just like because of those two playoff wins that they got over them the one of them was in dallas the other one was I want to say pro, pro league, league, right? I yeah. I want to say pro league, yeah. Uh, and so that's that's like against the top five teams, he's like 1.3 rating. You know, this is like nobody nobody comes close to that. Even. I, I have an anecdote to support that because uh, earlier in the year when we were at pro league in Malta, uh, I was walking to to our little talent area, and Carrigan was walking down the hall and he saw Axile, and I, I can't say the words that Carrigan said because there's the profanity in the mix right there. Yeah. But long story short, was you know what? Why do you always own us? Was uh, was the sentiment right there? So that definitely backs that Did up. Did he get an answer? Uh, I think I want, to, I want to know that answer. I mean, he answered yeah. that in the interview in the actual yeah. Top 20 article, which is essentially the point was some, something along the lines of, like whenever he plays against lower team, he's not so sure about what they're going to do, you know? Like, okay. they're like a little bit All right, him, fair enough. They don't think as, the same way as him is basically what he said. Uh. And so FaZe, I guess he's he's taken some pointers from FaZe himself, so he knows yeah. how how they play and how they approach the game. So that's it's, that's basically the answer. It's the best swordsman trope, right? There you go. The, the best swordsman isn't a friend of the second best swordsman. It's the, the worst swordsman in the world. It doesn't know how to handle the sword. These are the guys that uh, surprise Axel. Yeah, okay. And we got a couple surprises tonight. Now, uh, towards the tail end of the show, we will be having a, a frag movie to uh, show everybody. I think we did that last year, yeah. right? When we had the three of us plus yeah. uh, Freya bringing the award show. And uh, we mentioned Petter before. Well, we mentioned him again. He has given his blessing for us to unveil uh, number 21 to 30 here this oh. evening. Now, I'm going to keep everybody on the edge of their seats. It's not happening now. Uh, it'll be happening later in the show. So make oh. sure you stick around for all the good stuff. Uh, yeah, and, well, the, the, the most exciting thing, and this is for everybody at home, is Prof, he'll be monitoring Twitch chat. So if you feel like you That's have true. anything that you want to throw into the, the endless void, Prof will be here uh, picking up the best comments. I feel like this is very difficult for me right now. I'm kind of used to getting all of my analysis from the Twitch chat, but it's going <laughs> so fast. Uh, That's a good sign. That it's not, I just see names. I can just say names. That's a metric in itself. People are saying hi, Prof, so hi back to the Twitch chat. And uh, hi to Parla, because we have another interview standing by. <laughs> we haven't even said anything yet. We're already laughing. No. Adam, Neil M, Dinko, Neil M. Guys, how you doing? I'm great, Paula. You know, it's great to be here. I'm excited to try the drink of the night as well. One Which expert. is? That's, what is the drink of the it's night? A, it's sort of a cocktail, a new cocktail made by One Expert here at the, the HLTV Awards show. So that's really what I'm most excited about. And then obviously the awards is pretty good too. So I'm just, it's just great to see you in person again, Paula. Yeah. Neil M, you're already wasted, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. The one expect cocktails are amazing, so I'm happy to be here. It's amazing to have like this first like official award show kind of here, and like so many legend players, Pasha, Snacks, Get Roy, Forrest, all here for one special night. So I'm happy to be here. Very grateful for HLV for inviting me here. So yeah, 
Looking forward to a great night. It's going to be an amazing night. Let's bring in this young guy over here as well. All right, let's get him in. I see you watching. I see you recording. Hawker, <laughs> Alex, how you doing, mate? You good? Yeah, I'm doing well. We had a limo on the way here, and I was just pressing loads of random buttons, and I was just having the best time in the world. I didn't know what was going on. I had to walk here, mate. <laughs> it's the perks. You the perks we get. Talk, talk to me about this limo. All right, so we got picked up in the limo. Hawker was like trying to switch all the switches, changing all the lights. He was really trying to make it like a party in the limo, and we thought the driver had had enough of him. Because, and so the driver gets out of the car and starts walking around Hawker's door, and we think, okay, this is going to be GTA style. Hawker's about to get rolled out of the car. Turns out we actually just turned up to the venue. So, but it was pretty cool. It was a great experience. I was squished up nice and close to Henry, so it was a great time. Yeah, I have to, I have to find Henry at some point. Uh, Neil, were you in this uh, limo so, experience? Or? I'm not exclusive enough to be like these two in the limo. We only got the shuttle, but I got to share with snacks and pasta. So. That, that's Leslie himself, right? So I think I'll that beats that. out a limo. I'll, right? take, I'll take that. Snacks and Pasha or a limo with Henry G? I don't know which one most people take, but I know I'm going with Snacks and Pasha. 100%. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else that you'd like to say before I let you go? Are you looking forward to the show? Of course. I'm looking forward to seeing you too, Paula. Well, Always here. good to we're see you, mate. We're here. Always. Here. I've yeah. seen you now, so there you go. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to, like, number one player, obviously, yeah. seeing who that's going to be. I mean, I think, obviously, it's a, a little bit in question. You know, Simple had a bit of a quieter second half of the year, so excited to see whether or not it's going to be Zywa or Simple taking that top spot. That's that's what we're all here for. I mean, I think it's going to be Simple. I mean, he's been the best player, in my opinion, in the world, so I'm looking forward to the whole night. And, again, thank you for HLTV for bringing us all here for this special night. It's amazing to have everyone together for one night and to witness everything in a lovely city. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Hawker, Dinko, Neil, thank you so much. And who will be number one? Only time will tell. So fun of games right there uh, from Dinko and Hawker. Yeah. But uh, Neil, with some really astute words, mate. Like, the, th this is the one thing that brings me... I was downstairs having a bit of a champagne with Olaf and Forrest and Get Right, and I'm like, holy... I, I don't want to swear. Uh, holy moly, red beans and ravioli, and as uh, good Trace Thunder Saranthus would say. Good but, uh, mate, these were the guys, like, I know they're not that much older than me. Actually, I'm older than probably some of them, but that's what I used to watch when I was stuck in Australia, you know, yeah. just playing 1.6. And he's right. Like, these are the legends of the game, and it's fantastic to be here this evening to get to celebrate all of that. And uh, even a couple of predictions there of who they think is going to be the yeah. number one. We kind of went full circle with the whole 10 years. Like, this is 10 years of CSGO, 20 years of HLTV this year as well. Like, so much history that we were making, and going back 10 years, is when we had the first major, like, give or take, almost. Pretty damn close. In Sweden, right, the first era of CSGO was all about the Swedish CS, a bit of the French as well, but it was an IP, it was Fnatic mostly that were, that were winning the majors, that were getting the big trophies, right? So having them all here and coming back here is, uh, is kind of... it feels right. Yeah, you're right. You're bang on. Bit of a spiritual home here of Counter-Strike is old Sweden. And even getting out of the the, uh, the online era and getting back into the, the majors, right? We were here in Stockholm for the, the first major back. So I'm right, yeah? Yeah. yeah Brian, back, you guys major, both looked at me a little bit quizzically. No, I was like, no, no, that, was, that was right. I know, I'm not losing my mind here a little bit. But uh, okay, so what have we touched on? We've got the panel awards, we've got the main awards, we've been talking about all that good stuff and we've been reflecting on uh, the retroactively awarded awards, mm -hmm. uh, as it were. Even seeing a couple of these beautiful faces, it's, it's actually pretty cool to see everybody out of their jerseys and yeah, you know it's amazing I, I don't like wearing a suit i'll be honest and i'm sure a whole bunch of people out there if they're players like me they i can tell you a, a lot of them were very like so what is what is this dress is this code? a real are, dress are, code? are you real so like i don't i don't own any of these things i saw jw downstairs he bought a suit just for this occasion he told me he's never gonna wear it again but i'm not sure i think maybe next year again i think probably gonna suit him well well i saw him down there he's looking good he's looking off yeah. the trot so i think you know maybe whack it on a little bit more often uh, yeah, I, don't think, I don't think anybody's seen this many cs players in suits and like dressed up you know should I we start doing hl tv confirmed in this just whack out the suit every know. episode i will I'll skip this thank you okay <laughs> all right fair enough i'm just throwing suggestions out there right we don't have lucas here to keep us all I mean, in check we, if we up the rate maybe you know okay on real day rates then then we can maybe talk about it okay well now you're talking martin martin, martin Perry, he's out there uh, somewhere there in the audience some of the some of the boss so. I'll, I'll take a pay rise. You know, yeah. I'm always looking for a little bit more silent and silent. Now, uh, look, we do obviously have uh, Maniac and Veracity yeah. at some point who will be bringing the main ceremony. Don't worry, it's not going to be the three stooges here presenting uh, the awards. We've actually got some people who are a little bit more qualified to do exactly that. Uh, but as we move forward in the evening, is there anything that I've, uh, I've left off the checklist? I think what, what I would just mention about the panel awards, because this is kind of just a circle back to, okay. to kind of ground down. This, these are the awards that are given mostly by players, right? They're decided by players and coaches, 17 out of the 31 people that are voting, mm. and then other peers from the from the broadcasting and a couple of us from HLTV that are voting. Not me, but Striker is one of them. So I, I feel like it's, even though they're not the best player of the year awards, they are for roles and stuff like that, they have, 
I feel like a lot of weight because okay. they come from peers, right? So it's not just like a random person on the internet or some guy that thinks that he knows about CS. It is literally your teammates, former teammates, enemies on the on the server that are voting for you, right? So I feel like it has like a special something special to it. So are we ever going to release this list, Strike? I know what Prof said. Are you going to maybe release it on your own? Look, I don't actually have access to this list. I've just heard some some okay. interesting interesting quirks from, from who voted for who, you know, people who maybe people would think they don't really like each other so much and then like they voted for the for that person. Like very respectable, I have to say, like sure. a lot of these a lot of these people, you know, so very, very, very nice. Well, we'll let people speculate. Now, the, the awards, as we mentioned, Open, Closer, Anchor, Orb, In-Game Leader, Coach. We have the short list for all of those, right? Yeah. Which has been narrowed down to three players or three representatives for each. But do we have the long list for some of these here? Because I know that I, I was one of the people who got to vote. I know there was more names yeah. in the mix than just the three that have been decided upon. You want to yeah. kick us off? Yeah, sure. I mean, we can start with, uh, I mean, I'm going to just go by the order that I have here rather than the one that we'll go by. Um, for the Opera of the Year, we also had, obviously, you know, the, 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 the nominees. Top three, yep. The nominees would be Shiro's I Was Simple. Mm -hmm. uh, and the top, uh, the, the, the people below that would be Brokey, Monacy, Dexter, and Sampaios. Those those were the seven operas that we had on the list. Was there um, any criteria to pick these? I mean, that that's just the um, opera, like... I mean, that, that's the one that's easiest yeah. to decide. Like, right. Opkills per on, plus there has to be some sort of a sample size, I think, uh, yeah. uh, Matt, okay. and that's pretty much, that. that's about it, you know. All right, well, uh, we'll have to circle back to all of this, gentlemen, because uh, we're ready to get the main show underway. Let's kick this thing off and throw it down to Veracity on the main stage. What is up, everybody, and welcome to the HLTV Awards 2022. Even though we are in 2023 now, today we're going to be celebrating the very, very best of what Counter Strike has had to offer for all of us in the in the prior year that we've all just had. So Counter Strike as a series has been around since 1999, and we've continued to inspire so much talent around the globe, as well as many, many fans along the way as well. From the very early days of CS within esports, from when pro players would be competing for a free headset, and now fans filling arenas, thousands upon thousands of them, and players competing for millions of dollars along the way as well. Players that have dedicated their entire lives to making this work, proving that they are the very best in the world, not only as an individual, but also as a team as well. And that is what tonight is all about. The players that have kept giving it their all, both on and off the server. The players that once looked up to the old school CS competitors and then went on to not only face off against them, some of which even ended up teaming up with them as well. Those idols are also the people that we're going to be celebrating here today. The idols that have gone on to inspire a generation, a brand new generation at that, of professional players and showing them what it really means to not only be the very best player you can be, but also an inspiration to others, a great teammate as well. I'm so incredibly excited to get things started, so I'm going to throw things over to Maniac on the stage. Very much, Jasmine, thank you. Welcome everybody here in Stockholm. It is a great pleasure for me to be here. I'm excited. I'm also terrified. You guys are much more impressive than the Twitch chat. Uh, it's been a while since I talked to a full audience, but mostly I'm proud. I'm proud of where eSports has gone and we've gone a long way since we were sleeping under the tables 20 years ago. Now we have legends. We have some of the greatest players ever produced in Counter-Strike here in attendance. And this is all about celebrating greatness. So I am honored to be your co-host. Jasmine and I will take you by the hand for this evening. Let's get this show on the road.
All right, you can't get rid of us that easily. We're going to be handling it back and forth between the three of us, Parla, and of course, uh, Jasmine and Matthew down there on the stage. Now, look, the panel awards, 31 export, experts, sorry, six categories. Uh, and right, we're going to be looking at, well, who those people who have voted, right? And uh, one of the keys was the players, right? The representatives from the teams. Now, 20 teams were asked and only 17 uh, wanted to vote, Prof. So who are the three? Name and shame them right now. Uh, well, I can say Vitality. They, they didn't. They, they didn't, didn't nominate around, anyone. Didn't get around to to vote. We reached out. There was. I have to say, it's a very timely, short time limit. Uh, people are going on vacations and all of this. Vitality didn't didn't answer. Outsiders, and I'm missing one team, which I can't name right now. But I'll give it to you later at the end of the show. That's uh, that's why I have to <laughs> at the end of the show. Yeah. All right. Well, see, and we wonder why the player break is in the wrong part of the year this year. Yeah. So uh, they can't reply to get the panel awards. They can't reply to get the player break where they want it. And this is where we find ourselves. But we've got uh, 10 broadcast talent as well who voted and four HLTV writers. First in the category would get five points. Second would get three. And third would get one point all tallied up. And then we have our winners here this evening to make uh, well, the best of each of these roles. So uh, we were talking a little bit before. Opener, closer, anchor, orper, in-game leader, coach. Uh, where are we at? Which which category did we cover? We covered Open. We, we started with Opera. 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 Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, for the anchor, of course, the, the top three nominations would be um, Naf, Shush, and Perfecto. This is kind of the, the award where uh, we kind of want to give people who maybe wouldn't have such a big chance to make it into the top 20 through their roles, you know, people who are kind of like on the outskirts and more supportive elements and things like that, uh, a little bit more recognition. And so um, those were the, the top three and then the other ones that didn't quite make the cut uh, would be uh, Tessas, Magisk, Inters, JDC and Modern. Those okay. were the, the other ones. What about Obna, right? Where we've renamed Entry Fraga. Hit me with the the, uh, the candidates that we have and the ones that uh, just missed out. Right, so from the candidate side, we have uh, Stown, Yekindar, and Nico. Those are the top three that uh, we're going to be re revealing uh, here. And then the, the rest of them uh, that were still considered were Rain, Patsy, Electronic, and Hobbit. So, I mean, you can kind of tell maybe the Nico one is a little bit like, where do you exactly put him? You know, he's kind of like, you call them the lurky boys, you know? Like just sure. the guy who kind of likes to be in late route situations as well, but like being like kind of on, on the side of the map sometimes. But he has the kind of like aggression in him, and he ha he is involved in enough openers that you just have to consider him kind of in it, like what we would usually call yeah, an his entry. His role you know? also changed over time, so he's taking more of the pack roles, right, than than he did before. Well, this is one of the things with Counter-Strike, right? We talk about these roles, it makes it easier for us on this side of things to define things. But the broader we make it, or at least maybe the better definition we give it in modern Counter-Strike, the, the more on point it's going to yeah. be. And uh, hopefully people can see where we're coming from with a couple of the changes here, because the vernacular has definitely been shifted around. So what else do we have here? Uh, In-game leader of the year, what was the, the, the long list before we get to the short list? Uh, the long list, so I'll, I'll start from here. The Nitro, Apex, Dexter, Nafany, Snappy, and Electronic were the ones who didn't quite make the cut. The so Apex could have voted for him. Himself, top three. If he, if he yeah. actually, yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe he would have gotten into the top three. Who knows? Yeah, he was uh, involved in this, you know. Uh, and then the nominations themselves would be uh, Katie and Jamin Kerrigan, uh, which is, I mean, kind of to two degrees speaks for itself. You know, like these these the major guys winners, been, yeah. of yeah. course. So like like this, that, that I don't think that there's much uh, to deliberate over that. You know, I think these guys deserve to be here. Sure. Also, like Katie and Jamin, kind of on the opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of how they call, how they shape their teams, right, right? Jamin. Everything slow, protocoled, calculated, and heroic with their like crazy stuff, fakey boys, uh, pushing pro proactive, reactive. What, what, what was Nuclear. it? Nuclear. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, Nuclear, they're just, I uh, feel like that's also a good word because radioactive. They, they kind of feel like one unit, right? That is that is what makes her heroic. That crazy team to play against. I see what we've done there. What categories do we have left? I'm losing uh, we track We have closer. Here. Closer would be next one. Uh, we can start with uh, the. Uh, the people who didn't make the cut quite. Uh, Hunter, Frozen, Spinks, Blame F, and Twists. I mean, Twists would be the one that kind of stands out here. It's almost like a little bit un unfair to him that he's like his role I is not role, so yeah. well defined. He's kind of like Does all over the place. That's, yeah. that's exactly my point, you know? Like he could maybe potentially even be kind of like on the anchor side or like the supportive element sometimes, you know? So like with these people, it's almost like to their uh, detriment, detriment, that, detriment yeah. that they are they are so kind of like all uh, like um, jack of all trades you know like where they don't necessarily fit one specific role but that's just how we have to deal with things right and then the top three uh, would be uh, Case Rado, Exile, and Rops. So okay, those would be the, the and the last one, Coach. Exactly, Coach. I mean, this is the hardest to define. It's that's, the, that's we, we know exactly the least amount. That's exactly it. But at least you know this is why it's a panel award and not one that's like uh, like that can be objectively decided yeah. because we can't see into the background of teams and how much 
each coach has like to do. We can only go off of what people talk, like say about these their coaches, how much involvement they have, seeing a little bit how they work behind the scenes. You know, these things that are very like difficult to to uh, quantify, to quantify yeah. exactly. But you know, 31 people like are going to get to to a pretty decent uh, pretty decent result, right? And so that's actually the most people that we have kind of like on on like the long list. So I'll start with the the outside groove, Cyclone, Exist, Dustan, Dejail, Zonic, and Gob B were the ones who didn't make it into the nominations. Okay. And then the nominations themselves will be Blade, Robin, and Saw. Okay, if Saw might catch a couple of bursts, surprise, right? Because yeah, Antov yeah. has had a great start to the year, but then the, the latter part was not too fantastic for them. Now, Prof, I'll kick it over to you uh, as the keeper of the votes. Uh, was there any of these where it, oh, one player just missed out on being that top three by a couple of votes, by a couple of points? Uh, I feel like the, the coach, the coach area, there was a lot of coaches that were in a similar kind of range between like five to seven points maybe that decided was he seventh or third uh, so the coaching one was pretty spread out and I feel like that makes sense because we really don't have a great idea of who is better who is who is worse in this role so there was a lot of level players there and a couple of a couple of uh, votings were very close in terms of the winner as well. Like uh, three points in one category decided who was going to be like first and second. All right. Well, let's find out who's going to be topping these categories. We'll be right back. Bomb has been planted. I have very complicated job, but I love simple things so much. One move. One push. One touch. One love. One click. One expert. Skins on bitskins.com. Let's find out what you think at home before we uh, start handing out some of these awards. We're doing a lot of fluffing here this evening, right? We're really keeping people on the edge of their seats. Yeah. We want to make sure that everyone's primed and ready before we start handing out the, uh, I want to say silverware, but uh, you know, these things are bronze, but they're bloody beautiful. Uh, let's let's see what Twitch chat's saying here, Prof. Who do they think is going to be the opener of the year? Let's. Yeah. Uh, I'll give them a couple seconds yeah, like to start. Like thirty seconds, and uh, I'll the... let you know. Yeah. Okay. All right. So far, we're we getting some resident sleepers, classics. All right. Uh, Yanko's not here, so. Yeah, I don't know why that's. Fallen is mentioned. Fallen's mentioned. <laughs> Fallen's okay, mentioned. Fallen for opener of the year. I do yeah. love uh, a bit of Twitch chat. Yakindar and Nikos, we have, have some Ropses. I think that's the wrong category for, for us. They're well. trying though, and that's all we Someone can ask. said my mom, which is kind of rude, honestly. But <laughs> shout out to my mom if she's watching. I hope she is. Okay, all right. So uh, a mixed bag right there. Do you have an award here, Striker, that you're looking out for that you think, you know, that, well, I, I guess maybe. That's maybe. the problem. Like, I, I know too much. You, you know, know too, too much. To, to, to really talk about kind of like my favorites or what's going to be a surprise. Well, which whatever. do you it's think would be, be the most surprised. surprising to the people at home? That's kind of like spoiling. No, you're not spoiling. Let's go. Maybe you can no, reverse not, spoil. Saying, you that's reverse the, spoil. But that's the point, right? Like if, it's, if I say it's surprising, that already says something about like what it is exactly. You know? So I don't want to... Give wanna... me silent here, man. Just I'm going to say... a category. You can even make it up. They won't know. I'm going to say highlight of the year. Highlight of the... Okay, so we're later down the track. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to the to the women's awards, honestly. Okay. That's, uh, because we didn't really talk about that, and that's something that we added this year uh, thanks to, like, ESL Impact existing and having, like, a stable circuit for women's CS. So we have something to look at and kind of decide who the best team is, who the best player is. So that's, for me, pretty exciting. I think that's going to be maybe even the peak of the of the evening. All right, well, enough for us from now. Let's get stuck into things. Let's kick things off. Let's head over to the main stage with Veracity and Maniac. All clear. 
Thank you very much, gentlemen, indeed. We are starting. Hey, Prof, I see you indeed. Thank you for giving me the go out. We are starting with the opener of the year, and I think we should start by just addressing the thought process that HLTV is trying to put forward. Yeah. The lazy way would have said rifle of the year, but they actually try to deconstruct. They're trying to find some roles. Entry used to be the term, and Apex isn't here, but he is a remnant of the past where you would just double you straight into the wall. That used to be Apex, but now I think the category is a bit more refined, a bit more precise. It's not always about fighting in the 10th first seconds. It's about who can make the difference when it matters in his situation. And I think difference making is absolutely key. I think across all of our awards that we're giving out today, but players in particular that we really want to start to focus on, Nico is one of those players that I want to quiz you about a little bit. Obviously, if you've played at CS, you should know who Nico is. How impactful do you think he's going to be amongst the other two players of Stavon and Yakinda that we have? I think typically he, he benefits from the reworking of this category because mm -hmm. per se, it's not just about, again, fighting in the first 20s. It's about people who play sometimes in the middle of the pack, making the difference, but also some of these more aggressive lurks. And I think Nico embodies that as an individual. Sure, you'll see on a couple of maps, Mirage, for example, he might not exactly be with the pack, but when it's time to go in, he will. And I think this is why he ends up in this category. Well, I'm so excited to get things started and reveal our very first winner of this evening, but definitely not the last. Am I opening an envelope? You are opening an envelope. Is that the first time? I've always dreamed to open an envelope. I've always been jealous of people doing that. <clears throat> The opener of the year, 2022, is Nico. <laughs> now, unfortunately, we are not graced with the presence of Nico. I think historically G2 plays extremely well from December to February. They're very much together now, training, but we have a couple of words from the winner. Hey guys, uh, this is Nico from G2. I just wanted to thank HRTV for uh, giving me this award. I really appreciate it. Uh, I also want to thank the fans who supported me throughout the whole year. Uh, I was not able to come myself to the award show, but I hope you guys uh, will enjoy it. Thank you again. Hey guys, it's Nico here. I'm now professional esports player for G2 Esports. Oh. <gasps> Three flights from G2. Oh! And my superpowers are one tapping people in CSGO. Oh my god! What is wrong with Nico? Because. Oh! <laughs> what? That's so oh. sick! Because that tech line drops. Well, thank you, Nico, for these words. Now, opener of the year in 22. What a year it's been for him yeah. as well. Ranked number fifth in the top 20 as well. He's been brilliant. And there's nothing else we can say but bravo. It's been an amazing year for him, to say the absolute least. But we move on to our next award, and that's going to be the closer of the year. Now, the closer of the year is a player in which, you know, they really encapsulate the essence of patience. Timing is absolutely key as well in even the most high pressure of situations. And ultimately, it's all about waiting until it's their time to shine. Which players do you think re really start to embody this definition? Well, honestly, I think all of the three nominations that we have, namely K. Serrato, Robs, and Axa, are very much excellent in their categories. I also think that now, this category gets a better rap than before. Maybe we used the term bait at the time. Yeah. Now we're done with this. We're talking about closing because it's all about late round impact. Yeah. It's about waiting for your moment, knowing when you have to have that 1v1. Mostly you're going to play a truck ton of clutches. We know, for example, Robs has a bunch of example. Mm -hmm. Axal had it as well. So as I say, it's about the last 30 to 40 seconds of the round. That's where you make your impact. I'm, I'm super, super excited for a lot of these players for various reasons, but I'm curious to know whether or not Twitch chat are kind of spamming away their predictions as well. I kind of I'm sure they do. You think? I'm sure they do. Do you think any of them are going to be right, though? 
Probably. Probably. I mean, okay, well, I think there's only one way to find out whether or not that is the case, and that's to start to reveal our closer of the year. And the HLTV Awards 2022 Closer of the Year is... Please give a round of applause to Axile. Congratulations. Absolutely, yes. So, uh, I want to say thank you for coming here. And um, so many good people here, so many good players, uh, legends. Just very exciting to see you at such a good event. And um, I want to say big thanks to my girlfriend, family, my best friends, and everyone who supports me in my life. <clears throat> you never get away from me and always support me in all my starts, hockey, hip hop, and of course, yes. <clears throat> and I found uh, this way because you helped me and it's really important for me. Just wanted to say to all people, uh, don't stay at the one place, move forward every day, you will find your way. If you like it, just follow it. And uh, remember, when you are resting, someone working and becoming better. I want to wish you, I want to wish everyone to be proud of yourself and your life and make your dreams come true. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you so much, Axel, and congratulations once again. was maybe four seconds. Oh my lord, get out. On this. They need to be able to clear it. Tap for Twist. He finds the first shot. He's old. He's trying to line up Twist through the window. Axe has got it done. He's got it all again. This man's on one today. And it's cloud nine. With cover is low. Vinny, he just lost his support. Oh. And Axile shines. Oh. On the boost. Oh, oh it's not what? Nice. Now, I could talk forever about those amazing frags that we've just witnessed, but I have to highlight the inspiring words coming out from Axile there. So thank you very, very much for inspiring not only myself, but also everybody here as well. Now, our next award is going to be none other than the Anchor Award. Anchor of the year, indeed, and that in itself, the fact that we have an award for the anchors is also a cry for the evolution of Counter-Strike. Yeah. Because no one used to be talking about the anchors. I see you in the crowd, I know, <laughs> holding B on Mirage, you don't see anything for 25 rounds, no one flashes for you, it's been a hard time for many years. But now we get to the point where we actually recognize, we recognize the qualities needed. Some players in the past have highlighted this role, the Zipniks of Astralis of sort, they knew how to make an impact, Perfecto now with Navi as well, of course, he's a name that we have to mention, and we are giving them their due, rewarding the players who make an impact you can believe on, even though they might not have the best times. Well, when we start to dive in a little bit deeper with our three plays, we've got the likes of Nafly, Perfecto, and also Shush as well. Shush in particular coming second place at the Rio Major in itself, an incredible achievement. I feel like this is very much uh, open for the taking for many of these players. There is a conversation. I think Shush has been a big games man. I think he's stepped up massively. The work he's been doing on the CT side as well. Six out of seven maps, he's playing some of these shadowy position, we like to say, and he's doing a great job at that. I think he's very much important in that role for Heroic but. Enough of my shenanigans. It's time to find out our anchor of the year. The HLTV 2022 anchor of the year is... Perfecto. <laughs> so, 
does first of all say it's thank you for my family who support me every day of my career. It's my mom and my father who know all maps now, <laughs> you know, <laughs> all position. And of course, I want to say thank you for my second family. It's my team who support me like every day. He can help me in every situation. So just thank you guys. Thank you very much. Perfecto, everybody. Thank you for your words, Perfecto, and for the highlights, of course. I would like to create some tension, but it is a fact. He has become the anchor. It's very, very hard to take him out of that category. And once again, a stellar year for him. But the show has to go on. We move on to a very exciting category. It's time to talk about the AWP of the year. Got him. I'm pretty sure this might be my favorite category. No, oh, easy choice. Uh, easy choice, easy choice. I feel like it's going to be one of the most intense ones as well. Now, AWPers, regardless of whether they have that aggressive play style or a passive one, have the ability to single-handedly switch the script, flip it completely, and swing it in favor of themselves and of their teammates as well. So I'm super excited to dive into our AWPers. I don't really need to hype up the category. Just the fact that the three names we have in AWP of the year are also in the running for best player of the world. These are the three names we're looking at. Saiwu, Shiro, Simple, the three best individuals we have in the game. The role of AWP has always been important for us in Counter-Strike, but very recently it's become so centric. Yeah. You either perform and your team win, or you don't, and that is it. You are a missing cog that we cannot do without. And so I respect the, the pressure they have on their shoulders now. I tried to take the LVP, that didn't work out. I just put it back very quickly, gave it back to Kenny S, you can have it. They can do it, and they do it really well. But the real question is, if anybody out there is watching and they're like, I want to be one of the potential best players in the world, do you just pick up an AWP and it happens? No, no, I think you have to work for it. No, you <laughs> definitely don't pick it up, but it happens. You don't. You have to work for it. Oh, damn. That was me thinking I had a shot at being an AWPer. But it is time to reveal our HLTV 2022 AWPer of the Year. Everybody, please put your hands together for... None other than Simple, of course. <laughs> Let's have some drinks. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! Here we go! The man's so good, he doesn't even need to give a speech. That's simple, everybody. Best out player is simple. He's, he's still been playing like on top of his game, even if it's a little bit lower from like what most people expect. Like Simple's low game is still like a 1.3 rating. Oh, scope first. He can just kill Zaiwu. A battle of the. Oh! Well, I guess uh, for this year you would have to have obviously Simple as your offer. Muscle memory destruction. The first. He's in Temple. They say refresh. He activates. He chases. He chases. And Simple just. Oh! It's pretty obvious. I think uh, Simple has raised the bar uh, insanely high for all offers and not offers, and uh, he's being consistent at the level that he's playing. Look up as well. Oh! See his hampers for the parts coming in. Could do nothing about it. S attack, jumping, chasing, <laughs> but Simple with a no scope and four. Now, I feel like there is not a single simple frag I have ever seen that has just been meh 
mediocre. Every single time it surprises, it shocks. It takes your breath away a little bit. But heading over onto our next award, it's going to be none other than the IGL of the year. Now, behind every single team, there is an incredible IGL that sees the potential in each individual player, noticing their strengths as well as their weaknesses, making sure that even the playing field, they keep those players calm, cool, and collected. So without further ado, I think it's time to dive into our IGLs. Yeah, listen, we, we have three great names. We have Kadian, Jame, we have Kerrigan as well. And the IGL is one of these roles where from the outside, it sometimes seems a little unfair. What we do is we sit, we look at a team, they win or they lose, and we decide the IG has done a good job, he's done a bad job. We try to talk to them, we try to talk to the players, to the coach, to know how they behave, but at the end of the day, the results are talking. If you're Jame, of course, you won Rio, you got the MVP. If you're Kadian, you lifted a trophy in Copenhagen, you really created an identity out of your team, and Kerrigan's had a masterpiece of a year, that is for sure. So we look at the results, and then we judge the man. That's how the process goes. Now, I feel like especially during the earlier days of CS, IGLs would often get a lot of flack, you know? If your team isn't necessarily doing the best, it's the IGL's fault, right? What do you think it was that ultimately ended up swinging this kind of presumption? No, I don't think we have changed from that. I don't think being an IGL in a team that doesn't win is a comfortable position at mm -hmm. all. I think you either individually are a god or your head will be next. I think people don't give a lot of flack and patience to IGLs when it's winning. Yeah. And that's when you're having a good time. Absolutely. Well, it is time to dive into our IGL of the year. Oh, I'm hearing some cheers. What did, what did someone shout out? They had an idea. They're, they're real they quiet now. They're real quiet now. Okay, the IGL of the year is... Please put your hands together for Carrigan. <laughs> The list is long when you have played for many years, but I'll try to keep it short. Uh, obviously, thank you for everyone who voted for me to be the idea of the year. Um, thanks to my teammates who are always trying to follow my calls, and, and when I say go B, they go A, but still, uh, <laughs> it's good. Um, so yeah, thanks to them. Uh, obviously, having four players in, in top 20 is insane, so uh, thanks to um, Robin as a coach who has guided me as a human and uh, also as a, as a player and an IGL. And then obviously Faze for bringing me back into to the family and believing I'm the right guy to, to steer the ship towards victories, which we did this year. So um, last one, or uh, two last ones, um, to my family who taught me never to give up, even though it's a little bit tough. So yeah, it's, it's not on, over until it's done, you know. And to my wife, which um, she bought me a fantastic book about Kobe. And in that, uh, she wrote a quote about dedication sees dreams come true. And under that, she wrote, let Kobe's story inspire you as you will inspire others. So I hope with my victories this year and the way I work and the way I dedicate myself, that no matter what, at some point, one month, one year, 10 years from now, you will live and um, reach the goals you set for yourself. That's what happened to me this year. So thank you very much. That was Carrigan, everybody. Amazing, inspirational. Don't give up on your dreams. Every team he's touched, he's always had success. Carrigan up and over the top. He's going huge, going nuclear. He's just been getting better and better. Kerrigan is one of the best now. He wants to play for the 1v3. Oh, there's a surprise. He's the man to do the damage. Oh! I would say there's no other candidates in terms of IGLs. We fucking did it in here! Darby's trades are so strong. Get the ball, get two again! And simple stop two!
was Carrigan, everybody. Carrigan, I gotta say, I'm an incredibly huge fan of the way that you always play up to the crowds. They absolutely love it, and we love it as well, especially when we watch them in highlights like that. Now, we heard Carrigan mention just a moment ago a shout out to Robin, the coach of his team. So, I think it's only right we get underway with our coach of the year. Coach of the year, yes, a black box of sort. It's always complicated from the outside to know what is exactly a coach is doing. Yeah. What are they bringing to a team? We rely on interviews. We rely on players talking to us about how they coach are behaving, how they're helping them. Of course, the results of teams speak volume now. We have some of the nominees, Blade, Roban, So they all did marvelous yeah. things. But it's complicated for us to know. Blade goes out on interviews. He talks to us about how he's doing. He lets us peek behind the curtains. Sometimes we don't really know what they bring to a team. Now, from my perspective, at least, taking a, a little bit more of a deeper look at Roban, the coach of FaZe, leading them to three S-tier victories in this year alone. That is no easy achievement by any means. No, you're absolutely correct. And last but not least, Saw, you have to think about what he did with ENDS. Arguably lower budget, but still what they were able to do in the first half of the year. His collaboration with Snappy, Kerrigan just gave a shout out to Rob and how they were working together. We can imagine how this was for So and Snappy. So we have three excellent candidates, but it's time for me to find the one, the coach of the year 2022. And the winner is Blade. Surprisingly for me, I think uh, it was really tough here for us and uh, we had uh, big changes in the team and uh, I'm really disappointed that we didn't uh, uh, feed the expectations that uh, our fans uh, were expecting from us and uh, I hope we will do much better this year but uh, what I feel now is that uh, something like uh, I did uh, not enough, and other teams uh, or coaches did uh, also not enough, and something like I don't feel this is uh, like very uh, something that I deserve, you know. But I really uh, honored to be here, and thanks for voting for me, all the ones who, who were voting. Uh, thanks. Everyone who supports me and my team, so our fans, family, my friends. Also, it's a very, very great show. Uh, I see a lot of legends. I, I'm in sales for a long time, and uh, I know a lot of people, and uh, it's really nice uh, that now we have this show, and uh, we'll have the time to tell what we feel and uh, how important it is, what we are doing for us and for others. Um, also, it's great to be here, but what I want to say is that uh, in Ukraine now there is a war and uh, I'm really lucky to be here standing, but uh, in our country it's like terrible things happening and uh, please don't forget about this and support Ukraine and donate through the platform United24. Андрей Блейд, он проводит колоссальную работу, много работает с игроками, сам прогрессирует. Best coach of the year, I'm gonna go with Blade. I think that like his system and structure that he's like developed for the team has just shown so much consistency. Uh, he's like the the father figure of the team that just like teaches so much.
A very complicated job, but I love simple things so much. One move. One push. One touch. One love. One click. One expert. Finally, I found what I was looking for. Now that my search is over, it's gonna be a tough choice. But fortunately, no need to choose. When you can just have them all. Buy and sell skins on bitskins.com. Is a good vibe, is a good vibe, train, 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 is a good vibe, train, 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 good vibe. That concludes the panel awards of the Hatred TV Award Show for 2022. Uh, some nuggets right there. I think right now on Hatred TV, the uh, word robbed is trending. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Many threads with robbed. Uh, so a lot of people have been poached here this evening. A lot of uh, belongings going missing, gentlemen. But uh, Prof, you got a favorite speech of the, the bunch right there? I mean... Simples well, was succinct. I wanted to say simple, but I wanted to lead up to like give some props to all of the all right, serious, all right. very nice speeches that we had and all of this. And I kind of threw me under the bus and ruined my joke. But thank you, Chad. <laughs> it's always the same. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. Excel set the tone. I'm going to say that. I think that that was the tone. Sure. Thing. We've had a lot. Like, Get Right had the same kind of theme, right? Yeah. Following your dreams, which is uh, you know, something, uh, a nice message for everybody. No, I really there. I really liked the uh, Axel's. Like, he, he kind of surprised me. You know, he's also not really a talkative guys in interviews usually, but he came prepared. He had some notes and uh, he delivered, right? It was a very nice piece from him. Yeah, and obviously we had played there towards the end saying that yeah. he doesn't feel like he deserved it, but as you guys were touching on, right, this has been voted on by his peers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is this is one of those ones, as we were saying, like, you know, that, that's very difficult for us to gauge, you know, so sure. it, that was kind of like the most obvious one almost, like for where we would like more peer, more of their peers, you know, to be able to to kind of gauge what they yeah. they brought to their teams. Well, maybe we could jump into it a little bit more here. Uh, we do have the, the coaches on screen right now. H how close was this category of coaching? Was it was it close or was it a bit of a gaping void? The coach one was fairly obvious. Okay. Uh, not not um, not the most obvious of them, but but there was a fairly big gap. I think, uh, I mean, we were... Uh, yeah, I think I think we put out the stats on, on Twitter as well. So it's uh, 98 points for Blade and 55 for Robin. That's, okay. So it's a big gap and then saw 26 and then a lot of a lot of coaches coming in between 26 and 19, including Groove, Cycron, Exist, Dustin in, in that area, right? Uh, Saw so also got some recognitions here coming as as third. Despite it's not having that great of a year, he was recognized by Spears. The start of the year was great, right? Yeah. And this is the thing that yeah. recency bias really comes into play with it with a lot of this, uh, because you only really remember like, the last couple of months. Right? At yeah. the start of the year, when we're talking the first Pro League season of the year, or even like Katowice, like the final was a banger. It's a great thing to reflect upon, but it just feels like a lifetime ago, right? We're almost back again at Katowice again so which uh, category was the closest striker uh, the opener of the year was by far the closest okay. uh, Yekindar was very very close so to to nabbing that one Nico 95 points Yekindar 92 and then stones uh, some some way away with 45 so? so that that was by far the closest well if outsiders voted maybe they would have voted for Yekindar who knows yeah <laughs> do you want to get the third nugget the third who was the third team so wait team. vitality outsiders and who didn't vote and furia really there we go okay uh, oh, that's, interesting. That's how it, people the that's how the cookie crumbles. I mean, people can also look it up. It was essentially we asked all of the top twenty teams of the year sure. to put someone forward. I think the only weird one was Copenhagen Flames because it was the old lineup that was technically the top twenty, and all of these players are now on different teams. Yes. So then we got Vorborg, their former coach, who's now an EG. Funnily enough, right. and people are like, why are you asking EG? <laughs> I, that's a good question. I don't know why EG is not any award show mentioned, but here they are. Whoa, whoa, whoa! All right, enough of the EG slander. They're having a hard time. We'll 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 support. 
poor EG, right? North American Counter Strike, right? Like, oh. go, let's go NA, right? So, anyway, uh, other other than North America, right? We do have coming up very shortly. We're going to be getting into uh, the, the main awards, and one of the keys here, especially with the top 20, was uh, the key criteria that everybody has to keep track of. I want to make sure I mention it so that people understand how a lot of this has been decided. Statistics, awards, that's the MVPs or EVPs. Uh, the sample size, so we're talking about the matches against the top teams, how yeah. many big events you're in. So somebody like Blame, he had a fantastic year in terms of just stats, but in terms of well, the big games, Astralis, they weren't going as deep as they probably could have. If Blame gets the opportunity this year to shine, you never know how high up you be. Then you have consistency, and then, of course, uh, as I mentioned before, recency bias, which I think is probably the biggest one, Striker, that people do get uh, uh, strung up on. I mean, that's exactly it, you know? You know, you have people, um, you know, who obviously do better in the second half of the year, or at some points, like, closer to the end of the year, people remember that more, and that's, I mean, obviously that's natural, but something we always look at is the entire full 12, from 12 months, and, you know, for example, like, looking at Ents, you know, they were obviously a better team than what they looked like in the second part of the year where you know they obviously had to bring in some pyos they lost some key member in it, a key member in Spinks and you know people will not remember that as much now yeah could this team work prof you think here we got the squad of the year on screen i think this is like a crazy combination of like navi and like former phase like the old phase sure, okay. team with like Kerrigan and Nico and then you have today's like trio from navi and then exile on top of that it feels it feels I feel like too many cooks in the kitchen. I okay, like too, too many much, voices. Too much here, like too many great minds and players uh, at the same time. Uh, That's kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I think like Axile and Perfecto kind of the quiet guys, but then uh, between the remaining four, I think there's a lot of opinions, a lot of, lot of knowledge, but it doesn't even always add up to a great, like cohesive end product. Okay, so out of those four names, so you're obviously talking about uh, Blade, Nico, Simple, and Karagat here, yeah. who's gonna get the final say? <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be Kerrigan, surely. You think so? Surely it's oh. gotta be Kerrigan. He's the I think one Blade. You I think, think, oh, there we I go. think Blade has the authority still. Uh, that, that's why this team could work. Okay. All right. So winning the next match, we make this happen. Yeah. Someone's gonna come in, buy them all, put them in a team. Yeah, maybe. All right. Well, uh, well, that was the squad of the year. So that was that was cool. That was fun. That was the, the first time the panel awards have been done. Uh, would you call it a great success? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you doubled. Because if you guys yeah. went, no, I was like, well, what are we doing here, boys? Yeah. Like, you got the amazing. confidence. That's what I want to hear. Oh, no, this was amazing. Yeah. I, I think it surpassed all my expectations of, of how this was going to go. This is, yeah. Yeah, so far, the, the crowd reactions and everyone. I see people just went out for drinks and to get refreshers as we're kind of leading into the second part of the show. It's classic. The analyst desk is on and everybody goes to the Everyone bar. leaves. So, no story of my life for the last six years. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, but we did say there was a couple of nuggets coming later in the show, right? Frag movie right? Mm -hmm. coming up for the year. Uh, you, you monitoring Twitch chat is a big one. I know a lot of people are asking questions. How, how's it feeling? Well, uh, I don't know. People are saying, uh, Chad, what's up with the hair? Oh, okay. Well, yeah. do we want to get into that? I did a whole no, podcast on it all that. the time. We don't need to hear any more about it. Just plug it. There's a, there's a podcast about his Quite, hair. Yeah, literally plugs. Uh, but anyway, uh, one last little nugget here. Uh, Peta, as I mentioned, has given the blessing to announce the 21st to 30th. Uh, we're going to do that right after an interview with Parla. Here we are. Uh, you know what? Let's get straight to... The point, Vilga. I said before we started this interview, I was like, you guys are still number one, right? And what did you say? I said, not still. We are, we will be, we were. So what is this word still? <laughs> <laughs> the, the most dominant women's Counter-Strike team in the world, Nick Magassi. Play to have you all here. I'd love to speak to everybody, but it's going to look a bit weird if I'm doing this. So I'm mainly going to speak to Vilga. Um, when did you guys get in today? Yesterday. OK, yesterday. And how's the trip been so far? Amazing. Everyone came from their own home, you know, from different countries. And after it, we're going to the boot camp, Tilka David. So. Okay, so straight from this into a boot camp. And look, let's talk about 2022 for you guys as a team. It was a resounding success. Have you had a chance to reflect back on it and enjoy the success that you've had? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we achieved everything we wanted for 2022. And for the next year, we have uh, next goals, you know, and I hope they will be, they are, they are bigger, and I hope we can uh, be able to achieve them. Okay, yeah, so the boot camp then, what's the plan? So you're going to go straight there, and you're going to get straight into the practice, any rest at all, or is this sort of the rest and relaxation, the HLTV award show 2022? Yeah, yeah, we haven't played for one for a month, so, you, you know, it's done. It's done. Now we are back to the grind, and 
We just still do the tournament every day. We're going to be practicing. Amazing. Well, if there's anything else that you'd like to say to oh. the fans out there, everybody... Oh, we're back. All right. Well, a uh, little bit of choppy audio there, yeah. but I think we got the gist of it. Uh, Virgo saying they're the best, and they will always be the best. So yeah. uh, let's see. Almost, almost calling out Pala, like, you're still the best team. They're like, we're always going to be the best team. Right. Yeah. So uh, let's see how long this dynasty can continue. But I've teased it. Yeah. No more of that. Let's get stuck into this, because sure, we have the top 20, but people are always interested in who's just outside of that, who are our 21st to 30th placements uh, with this little stat starter base, everything that you guys are able to build out here. So let's get the graphic up on screen and we can start talking about some of these names here. Now, uh, have either of you had a sneak peek at this beforehand? Yeah, of course. I mean, um, the one that missed out by one spot, it would be electronic. That actually is kind of like the one that we decided like was the number 21. You know, okay. To kind of like give him that that kind of like a heads, like a head start over the over the other ones. But Elysian Nap were also kind of in consideration for the actual top 20. Oh, um, Liquid robbed. Liquid, liquid robbed. robbed right <laughs> liquid now. robbed. Yeah. Extra robbed. Some pious robbed. Everybody robbed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Elish is the, is the one that I kind of uh, that kind of stands out to me because he missed out for the first time in five years. Oh wow! Okay. Since 2017. That's the first time he missed out. Last time I think he was 19. Now he's just outside of that. So it's gonna be curious to see if he's gonna come back. Next one on the list, Dexter. I think that's the biggest one that people might be such kind an of, X factor. That's the thing. But his his problem was just sample size. He just didn't play so much. You know, he only okay. he, he obviously changed teams. Didn't play so much in the first part of the year. But even with OG uh, in the latter part of the year, didn't get so far. So that was kind of his like. He actually statistically stood out like outside of all of these names that like didn't end up making it into the top 20. He even stood out like statistically above some of the players that did, but the sample size okay. was just too small for us to to put him in there. You that know? makes but, sense. But still like enough for him to get that uh, get that kind of shout out. Yeah. What about uh, Rez Prof? I know you're a big Rez fan around here. Honestly, like he's the player that stands out for me. Like the, I felt early in the year, the first half of the year, he was on par to make his first top 20. Uh, it turned out to not be to not be true. But DJL made him up, so I'm sure we can find DJL <laughs> yeah, here somewhere. DJL's so what happened? There. You're Where tanking his top 20, mate. And there he is. I'm pointing at him. I don't know if he hears me, but uh, I'll and, and next to him, Jonas Gunderson, even even more responsible for this atrocity that happened. With no, the but he made Anderson. the top 30. Yeah, but that doesn't mean a lot. That's just one picture here, and it's not one of the things that go down in, in history, right? It's well, not a medal. It's not on the profile. It almost kind of doesn't exist. Mate, if I ever made the top 30 of anything, I'd be quite impressed. Now, uh, Kadian and Sirison being on that. Wait. Literally win awards for what you do. Yeah, but it's not playing. Yeah. They're talking about Maybe them. those are not that important. No. Things, yeah. but, <laughs> but I think uh, the Sirison one, right? We He started to break out of that shell, right? Sirison and Kaden. The reason I say both of them here is because both have been painted with a little bit of this onliner brush right. for a while, right? Kaden is a bit harder in-game leading all ping and the flux style that Heroic yeah. play. But Sirison, right, we know how good he can be at home. But he kind of broke out of that shell a little bit this year and started to be a, a bit more of a force. If he can carry some of the performances through into this year, you know, big, they're never a slouch. I'm trying to make Maui happy right now, right? I'm trying, he, he's always a, I don't know how he feels about Keto anymore, but the Sirison one, uh, I don't know if it surprised me, but it, it because you're taking into consideration the entire year of counter right. I mean, he did make it uh, one, during the online period, so we know we ha he has the capability of, of being a top 20 player, you know. But it's that's that caveat, you know. Like, does he does he step up in the big, big matches and things like mm -hmm. this? And that's that that really is like what basically kept him out of the list in the end. You know, it's it's some of these big big uh, like when it really matters, you know, where where he kind of goes missing sometimes. How do you feel about the Kadian one though, Prof? Right, because we're talking about uh, having Stown on the list. Yeah. Sure, he was in at number 10. Yeah. And Kadian, the only other player from that team to be in the top 30. That is, you have to think about the major. Just think okay. about them. He was in the running to be the MVP of the major, right? And okay. If, if things turned out differently, maybe in the grand final, maybe he was the MVP of the major. Maybe he was, you know, sneaking in the number 20 instead of Jame. Like that is a reality, even though he wasn't that consistent first part of the year, not that great, but you could definitely see in the second part of the year that he wasn't a liability opper and, sure. you know, not the person we talk about, oh, if Herwick had a better opper or something was different in, in Kadian's position, they could be winning. Like he was doing his job. And then, I mean, that is a part of why they won uh, in Blast, right? So I think it's like a deserved position and, and it's a very, I think he deserves props for what he did as an IGL, IGL op with his age. He's not that old, but he's not a young, you know, upcoming star yeah. either. To kind of have this rejuvenation uh, in, a, in a later part of his career is pretty good.
Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like a conversation that the people bring up a lot, like how good of a team was and how how many players they have in the top 20. I think for heroic, the the, the quote unquote problem, but it's not really a problem for them is they actually have five five pretty spread. strong players. They have a yeah. really good spread, but nobody really stands out outside of Stown like on a consistent basis. We know like they, they can have those tournaments, you know, like Kadian had at the major, like Prof was just talking about, where they can be the decisive factor, but it doesn't happen as consistently as with Stown, who obviously made the tenth yeah. place. I mean, and even so, the, the panel awards, Shush nominated. The didn't win. Uh, yeah, Stalin was nominated, didn't win. KDN nominated, didn't win. They win tournaments, they don't win the MVPs. They're, they're this like balanced force that, that no one really sticks out too much. Just Stalin, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, uh, again, thanks to Peta for allowing us to unveil that here this evening. Normally, he's uh, getting that done on the Twitter sphere. I'm sure he's tweeting some stuff right now. Uh, and of course, JKS has been robbed. But uh, let's get stuck in to the HLTV Awards. Let's kick it to it. A very complicated job, but a lot of simple things. So much. One move. One push. One touch. One love. One click. One X bet. Skins on bitskins.com. about to get stuck into the main course here, the meat and potatoes of tonight's show. What everybody's here for, we've got the highlight, the rookie, the team of the year, the women's team of the year, the player of the year, and the women's player of the year. So six more awards to be giving away here this evening. Actually, a couple more, right? Because we're going to be giving away, uh, well, second and third as far as player of the year goes as well. Uh, so a, a lot still to get through here, and I hope everybody at home is enjoying themselves. Now, uh, gentlemen, with uh, this list right here, do you want me to do the top 20 again off the top of my brain? You want me to really I look you in the eye? That. I hope that. everybody saw it. You need to go it through three to 20 now. Let's go. Uh, they, no, see, I only prepped yeah. the other way, right? So you can't be throwing that my way. But uh, look, we, we will be going through these awards very, very shortly here. Is there anything that you think that we should be defining for the people at home here to understand how this went down? Because this, this wasn't the panels. This was HLTV and uh, your yeah, eggheads over there getting this one all together. I think that's fairly, I mean, for, for all these, it's relatively obvious. I mean, for highlight of the year, that's the one that kind of stands out of the pack because we basically had something like, I don't know how many exactly people from HLTV oh, we had, but like 20, 20, 20, 30. 20, 30 people that we had voting on, on these highlights. And that's how this award got, got decided. The rest of them is, is essentially kind of like the process that we've had okay. uh, from with the top 20, you know, very similar. And even the top 10 teams of the year, that would be another one that I could kind of um, say that we've had kind of like a formula for that. That's ba very like entirely based on the ranking gains throughout the year, and that's yeah. okay. You know, that's that's basically the, uh, the the way that that got decided. The rest of it is kind of like the me, Peter, Harry were on the top 20, and then some of the like women player of the year, team of the year. Some of these things, you know, that that we decided more in a private uh, scenario. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, the rookie is a new award, I guess, that we haven't been doing before, and most of it is yeah, who is the best player that qualifies as a rookie? Like who that. That is kind of a tricky thing to define in, a, in in CS because it's not like you have a season, you go into like the seniors, the juniors, and all of these things under 21s. So we need to really find okay, who had his first year on the great stage. And for some players, it comes halfway through. For some players, it comes at the at the end of the year. Some people start like going like from January, right? So it's kind of tricky to define. But at the end, it's like who showed more in this year 
that defines them as a, as a young player coming in and making their breakout on the pro scene. Okay. Well, we've definitely got some big name candidates here uh, for a lot of these categories coming everybody's way shortly. I just want to remind everybody for the for the top 20 statistics, awards, sample size, consistency, and recency bias all went into deciding those names. Just so people know, it's not just the stats, right? And then if it is the stats, you say recency bias as if like that's being considered like. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. look, mate. I went and read all your articles. Yeah, it's the introduction article. Here, I know. You know? I wrote, so I wrote, uh, I was just reading the headlines, classic. That's classic. all I do, right? I have the easiest job here this evening. I just get to prod you two for right. a couple of different bits and bobs, and, uh, and away we go with all of it. Now, uh, look. This evening, when we get into these awards here, when, we, when we're giving away some of these, the highlight and the rookie, right? You said it's a bit more closed in, a bit more intimate the way that you decided. So it's on it's on feel. It's on, hey, or you're ba basing it off like, okay, the context of this event or the importance of this game. Like, because the highlight, for example, which uh, I'm sure we'll be getting into very shortly, uh, actually, well, we're ready to get into it right now. Let's take a look uh, at some of these highlights. It says we've stopped you here so much in this comeback. You have to go back towards A, but that's crumbling as well. Office is in a huge amount of trouble. He's going to try and take matters into his own hands. Couldn't find the second shot fast enough, but Jack, he drops it. Oh, talk about the stone. That Rops clip, that was a magnificent game, right? Yeah. That, uh, that G2 phase game, obviously. I mean, we should, yeah, we should kind of like put this into context, which is obviously this happened at IM Karavitsa, and the, the dis deciding factor is that it was at 14, 15 on Inferno. Huge and, game. And so like the, the, the context really plays uh, plays a part how kind of like how magnificent this highlight really sure. is. You the know, grandeur because, of all of Because it really did help them win the Karavitsa um, final. Yeah. yeah, I think the the voting voting for highlights is very difficult because everyone has different criteria. Right? Sure. They, I know when I talk to people, it's like, this is the best highlight of the year for you. It's like, what are you talking about? You know, some people like collaterals. For me, it's like, ah, this is kind of lame, right? It's Lucky more luck than yeah. anything else. I like the I like the pacing. I like when it's, like the rhythm of a, of a highlight. Like it needs to go to a crescendo, right? I think uh, the Rob's highlight has that for sure. Okay, well, uh, let's try this one again. Let's check out the Brokey highlight versus Stralis. <laughs> He's wondering what's going on inside of the smoke. He's going to find no, one, no. finds a second. Absolutely not. Goes straight for the bomb plant. They open the door in front. Oh, got to be careful. He gets one more. Surely not. On the other side, Clave is ready and waiting. Brokey. Oh, He's tying with no. him. And oh, my God, Brokey. You must be kidding me. How's your context feeling about that one, Striker? Yeah, I mean, that's the uh, second blast groups, uh, the, the blast fall groups. Uh, Am I right? No, I'm just trying to keep up, okay, mate. You know, you the, threw, the format, the stages. You threw, you, know? you threw like an interesting look at me. I was like, am I really wrong on that one? I'm pretty sure I'm right. Yeah, this, this is the first second. He's trolling the production. I was trolling you. Next, he's trolling the wars. He's going to bring JKS as a winner, maybe. Right. Uh, blast groups of, in fall. And this was actually a deciding game and a deciding map of who was going to go to the fall final. It ended up like 16-11. Brokey had like a 30 kill game, like a really massive performance. This was a part of that, uh, that highlight. And that's what kind of qualify them for the fall final. Obviously, kind of, this is more, rather than the context, this is for the grant, like 1v4, you know, and really, really difficult situation to get out of, you know, and Brokey just found it, found a way. He had a couple of these, you know, throughout the couple of last couple of years. I think what makes it for me is the last kill as well, because it's kind of a, kind of a ballsy Brokey style, kind of perfect for him, right? You, you don't really need to go up to the door and uh, like quick scope people and that 1v1 at the end, but he does it because he's broke. And how's Twitch chat reacting here, Prof? Are they going Twitch wild? Chat, are they going uh, crazy? They're spamming some ROPS, uh, ROPS budget pimp, some people are saying. Okay. <laughs> uh, some people are giving shout out to Freya. All right, shout well, uh, yeah, uh, making a lot of sense as usual. And making sense, we have one more highlight, and uh, this was the Monacy play versus MIBR. Triple there, Bonacy is in a lot of trouble. He no scopes one of them. He keeps going. Ten seconds, he fakes the ball, oh. spins around, takes down Woody. And now he's on the hunt, running up close and personal. Oh, oh. what a flick! The throw it. It's not deep enough. Bonacy still could have the shot. Oh, and there it is. One of the best clutches we've seen in a long, long time. It takes a lot to get your teammates, especially Nico, uh, that flabbergasted yeah. at what just went down. That right there, in terms of the mechanics of the play and the insanity of the moment. May, you know, maybe take a bit of the context out of the conversation, but that one is mental. That one I could watch yeah. time and time again. Show people Counter-Strike, show them that. 
And I, this is actually how we got introduced to Monacy because True. this is from the beginning of the year. Yes. This is literally the first time we saw Monacy playing at the Tier 1. And this is what he brought. I, I think it might even be his first series that he played ever with G2 because it was the MIBR well, opener. We have the stats, man. man. Uh, I actually didn't, didn't check the exact, like, first, first if it was the first match, but it was during the Blast Spring Groups. And it was first summer time. early on for sure. Uh, where this the, the this highlight play happened, so this is how the world got to to see Monacy and what he can do at the tier one. Yeah, hopefully plenty more of that from him as well, Prof. Uh, how, how do you feel about that play? Is that something you've pulled off in your in your time? Can I use numbers? Yeah, six hundred thousand. <laughs> okay, That's all right. One. You missed the briefcase. You just spilled the money everywhere. You know, you're missing a couple of little bits and bobs here. But those are the three highlights that were selected for the year. I don't know how much more extensive this list was. How many clips were you picking from? I think we have like we had like 50 or something like that. Like really a lot of plays. You know, some people were saying like how much. Like for example, the Canada play, the sure. famous Canada play from Cologne, the, the last couple of rounds of Nuke. That was like one of those that people were like, why is this not nominated? And you know, that's exactly what we're talking about with like kind of like the, the criteria. You know, some people just like the flash year plays which is why you know Monacy is like this uh, in, in the top three nominations you know and things like that he has so. two or three in the top ten so yeah he had a couple a couple really? more that are really, really high yeah okay yeah I, I think with, with with those type of plays like seeing is believing but you, you know you circle back to the concert you're talking about the Katowice a final the Rops play like uh, a lot of uh, well hold up a second we're ready to we'll get this one over to Maniac and Veracity on the stage and announce our winner of highlight of the year now, I feel like all of those highlights were incredibly amazing, to be quite honest with you guys, especially that Manasi one. I remember watching that one live. I'm pretty sure I actually screamed out loud once I saw that as well. Which one is your favorite, though? I mean, in terms of impact, it, it's quite clear, right? That Rob's moment was game-defining. It was grand final-defining. 15, 14, alone on the A side. He's put them all of these opponents in a while. That was incredible for Robs. I agree with Stryker. He mentioned the Monacy moment is when we got to meet him, when the world got to meet Monacy and when we all realized what kind of craziness he could bring to the server. And finally, as if anything else was needed, Brokey completely destroyed Astralis at that moment. They were starting to mount a comeback, being put out. I still remember Jason's reaction in the caster cam. That was something fabulous. So I, I personally, Robs, but fortunately, my opinion don't matter at all. Well, I know that we've been announcing a lot of the awards thus far, but I did mention at the very start of the show that we've got some incredibly special OGs amongst us here. So I'd like to welcome to the stage none other than the infamous Snacks. No, it's better. <laughs> okay, that's all. <laughs> okay, let's start. So at the beginning, it's nice to see all of you. Actually, maybe not all of you. Oh. <laughs> but it's still fine, yeah? So I'm still, I don't know why HLTV brings me here because they know I barely speak English. <laughs> and I think they don't know that the Pasha London School was all, also closed because of the COVID. And I, and I still didn't pass the final test yet. <laughs> okay, let's begin. So, also, the main reason I'm here actually is because I did a crowdfunding for Swedish internet connection, so I will never see again 40% of loss. <laughs> All right, so let's stop with these boomer jokes. And welcome to the stage, Monesi. <laughs> but he's not here. But he's not here, yeah? You're right. Well, as, as you very correctly pointed out, unfortunately, Manasi is not here with us today. But fear not, because he has indeed sent in a video with some words of his own. I can take it. Hello, guys. This is Cecilia from G2. And thanks, Social TV, to giving me this award. I feel very proud. And uh, honestly, during this clutch, I didn't understand what's happening. It just was natural. And also, my journey on Tier 1 started from this clutch, from this match. So thank you all, guys. 
I think Snacks might have stole the show right there. Yeah. Uh, that was that was sneaky beaky luck indeed. That was forty uh, percent. <laughs> we got a couple of Easter eggs in there for everybody playing at home. But congrats to Honesty picking up uh, well the the highlight of the year for for me. Yeah, in terms of the play, the mechanics, the the, the clutch that comes into that moment, and he, he said it felt natural. Uh, if we get more of that, he's a young lad, right? Uh, I, I think we're going to see plenty more of this kid uh, in years to come. So uh, exciting time. Uh, that round is kind of the, the definition of flow state, I feel like, because just understanding everything that's going on, who is going to peak them at, at what point, you don't have time to think about it, right? It has to be second nature. And just displaying that, I think, impressed enough people. Yeah. For him coming out as a young player and doing that in, in its, some of his first games is just uh, insane. Me, personally, I voted for Ops. I'll just put it out there. <laughs> And I'll say Rob's robbed. Okay, yeah, you're gonna look. I, I think right the context that we we're talking about, right? You mentioned it before the importance of that Rob's play. So uh, I mean something some, something that didn't quite come through the, here is is the time and that motorcycle clutch just to put everything into True. context. It was like eight seconds just as he was coming up on the on the, the kill behind triple uh, oranges, right? And so like he literally got the plan down like last second. That's what I'm talking about. Like it's criteria, you know, and like how people look at the, these things. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, Brokey. I don't think he was in the conversation there. Can Compared to those other, well, no, he was. He was in the top three. Of course, he's in the conversation. But uh, uh, Monacy and, and Nico, they're, they're boot camping, so they're getting the prac in. They want to yeah. pick up where they left off from the previous year and see if they can uh, continue their winning ways. Now, uh, some some more highlights. I, I think Snacks right now could be up for highlight of the award show. Yeah, as yeah, far for as sure. Speeches go, so we might get a poll going. Uh, it's interesting like how he apparently doesn't speak English, but he can be a comedian at the same time. So he nailed it. Apparently, don't need to know English to be a comedian. Yeah, you can bring him back every time. Now uh, he's, he's definitely made it more difficult not to bring him back for uh, events like this. Now, uh, we will be getting into the next category very, very soon. Now, to remind everybody who's hanging out ready for this, we've got Rookie Team, Women's Team, Player and Women's Player of the Year still to come. So still uh, a few more to get through. And special announcers for all of these categories, right? Okay. So well, there we had go. snacks, but we'll have more people coming up to the stage. Do you want to spoil maybe any more, of them? More or? people coming from the Pasha London School? Or? Yeah, maybe the, the author of the Pasha London School will come here and explain why Snacks was failed. And now they're all changing uh, what they were going to say, right? Because they're going to see if they can work out a joke or two in the next yeah. couple of minutes to see if they can they can top uh, what Snacks was just able to put out. Now, what's Twitch that saying? Are they agreeing with you? Uh, uh, there's, robbed. there's a lot of a lot of love. Uh, I think a lot of robs robbed. I think I have a great tweet here from uh, Brokey. says, lost all respect. So wow. sorry, this is absolutely rigged. Okay, uh, we might have to go and, and, and talk to Heko and see if we can mend the bridge. Yeah. Uh, see if we can fix the, the relationship with Latvia. That, yeah. Uh, they obviously buys Tatro TV uh, for G2. Yeah. Next. It, well, actually, that does fit into what everybody's saying. Yeah, buys for G2. They're they're in the top in the top three nomination for the team of the year. So who knows? Maybe they win. <laughs> It's really, it's an all-time low around here these days. Uh, all right, gentlemen. Well, uh, I, I'm still waiting for a special message in, not this year, but this one, uh, for when we can get things moving on. So this is the point of what where... Is the, what is the next category? That the next doing? category is going to be Rookie of the Year. Hmm. Uh, so I, I, I want to kick it over, but uh, I need to wait until I get the big thumbs up. That's technically how these things work. I know that you guys are hoping that I can send us in the right direction here, and this is where we need something special to fill with. So yeah. I mean, there's one name we can throw out there that was also kind of in consideration. A lot, uh, mate. A lot. Be We're ready to go. Sorry. Let's go. Let's don't worry about filling. Let's get into it. Uh, rookie of the year. Now, throughout the many years of not only CS, but also video games in general, we've heard the term noob, newbie, rookie. However, Thank over you, here at the HLTV Awards, being a rookie isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially given the incredible performances that we've seen from all of our three rookies here today. Yeah, listen, the, the world of Counter-Strike has changed. I think a, a couple of individuals out there have ruined what it is to be a rookie. Saiwu comes in, immediately best player in the world. Bid comes in, wins everything there is to win. They have ruined all expectations, right? They have made it impossible for anyone else to have a good rookie year, but that's not a fact. That is not true. I think in today's age, there is a high demand for accomplishment and performance straight from the get-go. And the names we have here, wonderful, Patsy, Manesi, they all fit into the narrative. First of all, shout out to Spirit and I guess the culture that they have brought up, bringing the likes of Wonderful and Patsy together. Patsy, extremely aggressive, two playoffs major, Wonderful picking up the slacks of Dexter behind him, but making a great job in Rio. And Manesi, of course, yeah. that had a brilliant year, almost making us forget that he actually belongs 
to the rookie category. Honestly, watching the clip that we saw of him previously, you wouldn't actually think he, he would be considered Incredible. as a rookie at all. But I have yet another special guest I'd like to welcome to the stage. Please put your hands together for none other than JW. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think Snacks set the bar pretty high with the jokes, so I'm not even gonna try it. <laughs> um, I just wanna say big thank you to everyone for coming here and uh, to HLTV for throwing this show. I think it's a long time coming for CS, and uh, yeah, I think the scene deserves it. So. So I'm gonna present you the Rocky Rookie of the Year by HLTV, which is, he's not gonna come on stage, but Monesi. <laughs> Should I take the speech? <laughs> you can't take the speech or the trophy, but don't worry, Manasi has indeed sent in yet another video for us to take a look at. Hello guys, this is Manasi from Chitro. Thank you, Shantini, for giving me this award. And uh, special thanks for all the fans who have supported me this year. This year was successful for me, and I hope the next year will be even better. Unfortunately, I couldn't come because of our preparation of the team. And next year, I'll come for sure. Thank you, guys. I think he's uh, insane. Eight seconds left, point blank, on fight. Oh, oh, oh Monacy, you do not survive a clash versus the kid. I don't think I'm going to be worried about the tournament. You just need to hold the idea that you're the best, you can. There's a lot of stuff. on Monacy! He's performing at G2 against everyone, so I think it's going good for him. The Rookie of the Year. No scopes, one of them. Keeps going, 10 seconds, he fakes the bomb, spins around, and now he's at the hub, running up close and personal. Oh, what a flip, what an absolutely godlike sequence from Monacy. Just don't stop believing, guys. It feels fucking good. <laughs> The uh, flash right there. So Monacy with uh, two awards in almost consecutive fashion. So yeah, uh, yeah good stuff to him. Congratulations. And uh, look, uh, I, I liked what uh, Matthew had to say there about Spira right? having uh, wonderful and Patty in that conversation. Both of which have, have turned heads this year. When that Spirit versus Phase game comes up from the PGA, oh, yeah. mate, that right there. And I understand that you know we're talking about the whole team. Uh, it, that has to be one of the most entertaining games of the entire year. And you know Patty's a part of that roster at the time. Wonderful's obviously joined since then. And uh, look, I'm excited to see more of the two of them. But did we? Have any other names who were close to the top three in the conversation? Striker, who, who are we looking at here? Yeah, I mean, some of the some of the people that, that deserve pointing out would be JDC and Zershin from obviously who kind of okay. came over from the from the Mouse NXT uh, Academy, obviously into the main team over the course of the last year. Um, Orgy to some degree as well. Orgy, I think. exactly. Yeah, but definitely Fame is a player that oh, you also won a bloody to, major. Yeah, but I think for him is also like how much did he play, right? He had very few big big tournaments, big ga big games. Wonderful had a, like a similar issue, only coming in the second ha half of the year, right. which kind of limited him. But you have to look at his second half of the year was amazing, right? And mm -hmm. I know Spirit didn't win any uh, the award for the rookie, but they have two nominees, and I think that. That's going to be something itself. that we're going to... Yeah. That's a storyline for next year, for this year, actually. We're in 2023 already. Uh, I feel like the, uh, you and the, and the, and the lads uh, casting will be bouncing off of that in the next 12 months. For oh, sure. for sure. Uh, and I think it's really exciting right now because this is the new generation, right? We're obviously celebrating. We had those uh, awards for, for the legends. You know, I'd get right with the interview earlier. Then we have, uh, you know, obviously we're going to be awarding the, the, the top 20 yeah. throughout in the last few. Right. But to acknowledge the rookies as well because we're, we're seeing all the generations of players here and uh, we, we've had a lot of conversation about it, right? And everyone's very excited to be here and, and thinks the awards are a long time coming. But this has shown the growth of Counter-Strike. Yeah. I think that's just a real testament to how far we've come as a game. Yeah, I think the uh, YJW was announcing the show the the award as well the rookie of the year because he was practically the rookie of the year of 2013 sure right he came in uh, with fanatic won the won the major the first, the first csgo major. major mvp of the major and picked up his mvp medal finally today right so that that's why it makes sense to have him there as I mean, he's uh, the wonder child 
He's the wonder child. You yeah. didn't want to get Devil Walk back on stage, dropping his trousers? Well, we will have some... We have a quicker, I feel like, camera work these days. We could get him out of the way, and it's it's not really appropriate. It's not cool, actually. Okay. Well, maybe that's one of the surprises for... Oh, uh, I was yeah. just going to say, and, and give props to Monacy. Obviously, this is a kind of a slam dunk. Like, if you look at the... the year Very Monacy placed, speed, yeah, he for was sure. Number seven, number seven in the top 20. I think that's there's no question that he was the best rookie that, that we had this year. And it's kind of like... I don't want to say breaking new ground because we had Zaiwu, you know, and he's, but then again, like who comes into their first year and just big picks up the, the number one player of the year award, you know? Especially and with then, a team that struggled so much, I guess, yeah. in, in G2, missing out the major and stuff like that. You can say to Vitality and Zaiwu, also the team wasn't that great. Zaiwu was, uh, but but in not really comparable situations, I feel right. like. Right, and well. then like Bit would be another like big uh, example of that where he, in his first year, was number nine, I want to say, last year. Um, in the top 20 and so like he's in that kind of a conversation you know, in his first year I, and interestingly enough both coming from the Navi Junior pro program I think we have uh, Ami here who's who's one of the people who who is behind that that project and just helped you know we have uh, Hattrick going to NIP you know and like some of these these stars of tomorrow that, that come through these academy rosters I think that's been a big kind of storyline of the last two, two years, I want to say. Sure, yeah, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see, like you, you mentioned Hedrick right there, it's going to be interesting to see like which new names, maybe not on the radar, because obviously as well as uh, part of these interviews, you, you get to see uh, who people are thinking are going to be the next big thing, the bold predictions, right? And uh, with some of these names, because of the Academy League, the, the list feels like it's got shorter and shorter. It's difficult to find these nuggets, right? Because a lot of people were out there, Hedrick got a, a couple of nominations there, I saw uh, Yim Had a couple. Yeah, well, but like the, uh, the Chiron as well, getting uh, uh, his name thrown in mix right there so uh, the, the group is getting smaller but that's because of all these different initiatives we have to put these young players on everybody's screen and give them the structure and the experience that they're looking for and well then you get absolute monsters like some of these names that you're seeing right here right now so uh, yeah look Counter-Strike is, is definitely breeding them different and uh, yeah I, I don't know if there's anybody who's not really on the radar who's gonna come through this year and really make a splash because where, where are these players gonna find themselves there's not like there's many teams with open positions no, I mean that's uh, that's gonna be a difficult one, right? A trick is definitely one of yeah. The we can't keep circling back to here. Put a lot of pressure on the kid. Yeah, that's true. But we did on Monacy too. Like, if you think about it, he was more hyped than Hattrick is now. Like, he he was the guy that everybody was looking at coming through the the Academy League, G2. You know, obviously big name. I don't want to say that that IP isn't. You know, but like there was a lot of pressure on Monacy at that time, and that's going to happen now to Hattrick as well. All right. Well, uh, let's get into our next award here. It is uh, Women Team of the Year. Well, the guys very rightly so explain that Counter-Strike has seen growth in numerous different ways. The women's scene in particular is one that is incredibly exciting with initiatives such as ESL Impact and also many more coming on up as well. I love the fact that these incredible women are inspiring thousands and thousands around the globe and proving that they have exactly what it takes to be the very best, uh, ultimately. It's been taking leaps forward, that's for sure. You mentioned the leagues, you mentioned the lands, and that is great to see. It is really great to see that it is moving forward now. When it comes to the nominees, I'm not going to stand here and pretend like I'm a first-hand expert. I went out, I looked for information, I searched for it. I saw CLG absolutely destroying everybody on home ground. That's a fact. I saw Furia always making it to grand final. And then I saw Enigma Galaxy. And here I am trying to make suspense. I'm trying to make like there's a question. They lose two maps on land. They destroy everybody. That was an incredible year. But still, we have to announce it. We do indeed have, rightly so, an incredible guest joining us here tonight to reveal the winning team for the women's team of the year. Please welcome to the stage former 1.6 Pro and team manager for Team OG, Vladislava. <laughs> It's excited to be here. Uh, it's a big honor for me to be here and with such a legends. I prepared short but important speech. So, how could have known at the start of my sports career that a simple goal from Donetsk will be here at the award show? As Ukrainian girl, I had to face a lot of different challenges and find a fight against many stereotypes, as I think many girls in your sports, unfortunately. Uh, but 
I'm extremely excited to see what industry is growing up and improving every day. I believe there is a light for everyone who would like to be a part of your sports. No regrets to your gender, nationality, or anything else. If you have these ambitions, go for it. <laughs> oh, I'm so worried. Sorry, guys. And a bit sad part. I believe everyone knows about the situation in Ukraine. And unfortunately, me and my family have been affected by this war since 2014. And the last year, the situation became even worse. All Ukraine have been affected. Please support people who were affected by war. It's a really terrible thing to face, and it's very difficult to overcome it. I know it. So, fuck wars, stay human. <laughs> And let's come back to the better part. I was invited here as a guest to present the award, the best women team. And as you know, it's the first nomination for like such a great nomination for girls and the best women team. Uh, I want to express my huge respect to all nominees. I know how hard it is to create a successful team and keep it together, especially when it's uh, just girls. Um, this scene was struggling after we swiped it from Counter-Strike 1.6 to Global Offensive. There is were no stable tournaments or any other support. Without competition and safe environment, it's so hard to stay motivated and keep working hard to reach a high level. But for the last year, uh, female scene took a big step and showed great potential. I want to say thank you to everyone who made it happen and keep supporting this scene. It's very important. This is the first award, as I said, for the best women team. Thank you, LCT Org, for keep growing and improving our big love, Counter-Strike. G sports. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it will be a big surprise for everybody, but it's Nima Galaxy. Take it, guys. Uh, I will also read because everything I can remember is just strats. So, <laughs> uh, looking back to the creation of this team three years ago and to the point where we are right now, um, it's actually incredible. Um, we started from zero and we made it all the way to the top. The amount of struggles and tears and prejudice we had to overcome is, you know, it's it's a lot. <laughs> But we never give up because we have um, a bigger goal to achieve. And I really hope that one day we will see mixed teams where girls and boys are playing together and we will do everything in our power to make this day closer. Um, we want to thank everyone um, who made this journey possible. And starting, of course, with uh, people who supported us no matter what, our organization, the owner of Galaxy Racer, Paul Roy, and owners of Nigma Galaxy, Mohamed Murad and Christoph Team, uh, and everyone who is behind them. Uh, we are grateful to ESL Impact and with everything they're doing for the scene. And I believe that with initiatives like this, we will see more female players entering esports. And of course, Big thank you to HLTV and for recognition and invitation of our team here. Yes. 
doesn't quite land. It's deep in there and it's out of the close up. Yeah, it just does feel good. She swings out and she sprays them all down. She finds the kill. She does it. The one versus three. Take it, Mickey, back. Congratulations to Enigma Galaxy there for picking up uh, Women's Team of the Year. Now that's the, uh, as, as Vladi just said, the, the first time this award has ever existed. And uh, I think a, a lot of great words there from Virgo. I think it's extremely important when you look at you know, what we're trying to achieve here. And it's, it's bang on, right? Everybody loves Counter-Strike. And that should be what we're trying to achieve at the end of the day. And if uh, initiatives like this are able to bring more and more people into watching, playing and enjoying the thing that everybody who's turned out here today is here for, that's what we're looking for. That's what we want to see. So congratulations to them. And uh, well, let's see if they can continue that domination. As you can see, 18 to two uh, land win loss in the year. If they yeah. can continue that this year, uh, it could be very, very exciting. Now, there was two more teams in the mix, Fury Female and of course, CLG Red. Uh, who ranked where? Do we do we have the order? Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, I mean, I think this is also not that uh, surprising, I would say to people, just because Fury Female are basically second to to tuning uh, all, all the three uh, big events that they had basically the two impact leagues and then valencia uh, and then they basically dominated almost everything that was to dominate in south america they won like i don't know like four cash cups and a couple of other tournaments okay. apart from all the way at the end of the year what i think uh i missed the the they lost one tournament yeah, at the, the end before, but this before was... is the team that who beat them on the last yeah. tournament but basically they they were second at all the three big events and so they will be second place all right well, uh, well, you can see it here. We're going to whack the placings up on screen for you. So, Striker, you don't just get to do the honors here. And uh, coming in third place will be uh, COG Red. Now, I, I do believe uh, we have a couple of little videos like we just showed there for Nigma Galaxy for uh, both of these names. So let's kick it off. Let's start with uh, the second place of uh, Furia Female. And of course, uh, we got CLG Red to talk about here as well, Prof. Now, they had a bit of a mix up, right? Uh, yeah. They chopped and changed things a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, the start of the year, I mean, even going back a couple of years, CLG Red was the kind of dominant force from NA in terms of uh, women's CS, and it was mostly Giuliano, Zaz, maybe Will Vilga on the European side, and then CLG Red, St uh, Steph, uh, Miss Harvey back, back in the day, and all of these players that came through the ranks. and. We expect them also to be competing for titles this year. Not that much. Like they are still there. They they are number three uh, on the on the ranking for the women's teams of the year. But they did go through a big shakeup later later in the year, trying to pick up things. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, uh, I started taking a bit more notice. Uh, an Aussie in the mix, you know, yeah. uh, Bibi Ann in the mix right there. I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. You, you, <laughs> that's all you needed to do. I'm an Australian. I'm paying attention. There's a French import as well. So they, they're just following the blueprint that already exists, right? Have a decent North American team and then find a Yakindar to like spice things up. They've seen Liquid do it and uh, they're doing their best attempt. Uh, let's kick it over to the CLG Red video. Simple things so much. One move. One push. One touch. One love. One click. One X bet.
Finally, I found what I was looking for. Now that my search is over, it's going to be a tough choice. But fortunately, no need to choose when you can just have them all. Buy and sell skins on bitskins.com. Thank you for sticking with us. Uh, well, we've got through three awards here in the HRT Awards section of the show. We've got three more to go, and, well, we're getting to uh, the, the big ones now. We've got uh, the, the top three teams of the year coming up next. Then we have, uh, well, the top players in uh, the women's category, as uh, well as completing the top 20. That's not uh, too far away. Now, uh, looking at our next category here, Mr. Prof, uh, G2, yes. what do you have to say for yourself? Yes. Just yes? Yes. You're a yes man. Yeah, as I tweeted uh, earlier, hashtag Monacy Award Show. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's all I have if to say. If G2 win Team of the Year, uh, we're going to have take some off, problems. Will you take off your pants? No, I won't. But behind uh, that. so I've already done a couple of hosting segments not wearing trousers before. It was on Facebook. Uh, so no, It would be pretty funny it. because people on stream wouldn't see, but everyone here through the glass ceiling. Glass, glass ceiling. ceiling. The glass door. Yeah. The glass whatever. I think it's window. window. I think that's a window. Yeah, I don't Are know. Are they it's the future or we? Who's watching who? That's true. Who watches the watchman? Yeah. Well, uh, someone's going to be looking at their watch right now because we're just after nine. I know for the kids at home, right? They're getting a little bit antsy. Yeah. I can feel it. And I can remember sense Remember Simple's it. words. Yeah. Well, Let's go drink. drinking. Uh, well, yeah. You know, so if you're of that. legal age, right? Make sure uh, right, make sure drink drink responsibly. Uh, but uh, yeah, I know it's getting a little bit late, but we want to make sure we pay uh, respects to all of these different categories. 2022. Great year of Counter-Strike and, uh, well, all of these teams are uh, ready to be announced. Let's get into the top three teams of 2022. Stick together, team. I don't know what they've been drinking up there in the glass room, but it's weird that I have to steer the ship correctly. You guys are cool over there. Glass seating, glass floor, glass window. <laughs> Maybe we can make a poll on there. Anywho, listen, there's a whole lot of boredom around the team of the year. I know HLTV looks at the amount of year, a week, sorry, at the top, they make some calculations. I don't care about these numbers. I don't care about it at all. When you look at 2022, there's a half of it that is the Navi versus FaZe fight. And this has produced some of the best games in the history of Counter-Strike. I still remember Cologne. I still, and I probably will never forget Cologne, being on the desk, watching these last few rounds. And then we might laugh at G2, but you know what? Beginning of the year, great in Katowice. They finish off now, but that'll be with a win. Yeah. They are here. And I don't care about these numbers, I don't care about the weeks, I care about the emotions. I feel like they definitely mean business, every single one of these teams, and they're definitely not ones to be messed with in the slightest, especially when you take a look at those rosters and the incredibly impactful players they have amongst them as well. Matthew, I'm impatient. I want to know who's won. I haven't gotten a go yet from production, so I don't want to throw them off the bus right now. I don't know if we're ready to proceed. We can talk about the teams a little bit more. I don't want okay, to yeah, yeah, earn anyone's on. job. Go on, let's do that. My question for you is, obviously, we had FaZe winning the PGL Major over in Antwerp. Unfortunately, Rio Major wasn't necessarily going their way. From your perspective, how do you bring things back from a situation like that? I think they've did. I think they've done it. I don't, of course, they haven't been winning events at the end of 2022, mm. but their reaction was great. Think about the fall from grace. If you face, you've won four titles early in 2022. You have Katowice, you have Cologne, you have the first major, a pro league, even there as a bonus in the pack. And then, of course, in Rio, everybody knows how it went down. But enough of talking about phases and what they've done here. It's now my pleasure to welcome on the stage a name that has been mentioned already here, the Katowice 2014 winner and MVP and a great role model for our scene. Please welcome Pasha Biceps. Hello guys. It's nice uh, to be here with you tonight. Uh, always uh, be too nice. My English is still bad, sorry for this. <laughs> it's always uh, be, be with you here with uh, eSports lovers, guys. So I need to say it. You are not my friends. You are my brothers, my friends. Woo!
Tonight, tonight I receive some uh, medals from my colleagues from HLTV. This is probably is one of the best moments in my life. Expect wedding with my wife. <laughs> so guys, I am very... I am very bad with speech and uh, my English is still so bad, so I am here, I am glad to announce the best team in the world, the number one. The number team, the best of the base, face. to see the team is not here. Um, somebody has to play some deathmatch and get ready for the season. So I told them to stay home until they are done finishing uh, 20,000 kills on deathmatch. Um, so they're not here yet. Um, but as I speak for the team, I, I think uh, we're super happy with the year. Um, we didn't finish as we wanted, uh, but winning Cologne, Katowice and a major, I think that was the dream come true for many of, uh, of the players. And I, I think what describes this team the best is a family. Um, very strange personalities, but somehow we mesh together. Uh, the second, the door to the practice room closes. Very strange things are happening. Sometimes they get on social media, uh, they shouldn't, but um, obviously I think the way to best describe the team is actually to describe what team is. And, and for me, it's together. Um, we all bring something to the table, and, and therefore, as a team, you are together and everyone achieves more. So thank you very much, guys. Great roster that you can say was maybe in competition to be the GOAT is the current phase one. Carrigan himself, as a player and in-game leader, has always been there. I remember so many times of Brokey just deadly assassin, no emotion, tapping away, USP in hand that is like one bullet, one bullet, one bullet. <laughs> Disappear, Brokey takes four. Best team of the year, I think I'll still go with FaZe. I think that they had the best results of the year. Most people would consider the first half of the year would be like the FaZe era. Но очевидно, что FaZe клан они выиграли много турниров. Никто пока в этом году даже близко не подошел к этому. This year's Cologne, FaZe against Navi. Uh, last map, map five. Uh, twists, jumping off silo, uh, two rounds in a row, the same round, Kerrigan calling the same round two rounds in a row. I think that series is something that's not going to get forgotten. In the dying stages of regulation, has that gone? 15! Phase is not top one, it would be strange. They won Kato, they won Cologne, they won a major. I think they won EPL. So they have a, and they're in the finals of this blast. So Phase has to be top one, that's common sense. I think we agree, Yakinda. It would be strange, uh, especially, and he, he, he hit the nail on the head right there. But Carrigan, one of the keys, I know he's here accepting the award. He was writing the narrative for FaZe earlier in the year. You know, we were the first team to win Katowice, Cologne, and a major, right? He was the one pushing that. You know, it wasn't from the storytellers, quote unquote. It was Carrigan, like, coming out, and he, he was kind of setting the path for the team. The first half of the year for these boys was fantastic, Striker. You, you can't shy away from it. Yeah, I mean, Electronic put it well. Like, nobody really has come close to matching what FaZe did this year, even like considering the second part of the year where obviously you know they they were lacking those trophies from the first part but for the first four tournaments they won them all they won basically the biggest things that there was to win in that period and and so there's there's just no discussion right yeah just sad that they didn't shave their heads after the major <laughs> i did read that in that the, the brokey good... interview right yeah, yeah, yeah apparently apparently that was the that was the jinx uh, they, i can they said understand they, were gonna, they said they were gonna shave their heads if they win the major they didn't they got punished by it yeah well uh, let's see who came second and third because uh, we can reveal the placements here for everybody playing at home now we know it was navi and g2 but in which order Order. Okay, G2 third and Navi coming in second place. Uh, same, you know, look, we, we know how difficult of a year it, it's been for Navi, right? And the fact that they still come in as the second best team of, of, of the year is uh, insane, really, when you, when you really uh, throw all these hurdles. And well, without further ado, let's throw up uh, their video. And a big game hunter. Has he oh! not
from Maus. The follow-up, it's all on simple. Player trying to cause attention away, and he goes into the no-scope at middle. Smoke is up, he spots it out. Bimas goes down, and suddenly it's just one more victim needed. Simple gets it done. And he lines up two. He caught a wind of Tessus, Electronic. A little bit of time to flirt with. And he's coming oh! in. Oh! Oh, the bluff! Oh! 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 I might have to work on some different O's going yeah. into this year of commentary. <laughs> see if I can spice it up a little bit. Uh, we'll see what I can add right there. But it's been such a long year, you kind of forget all the different hurdles for Na'Vi. Right? The whole Boomage situation, Electronic yeah. in-game leading, the SDY being there for, I, I want to say, one of the larger chunks, and now this whole yeah. MPL situation towards the tail end. So I impressive stuff. Prof, what, what stands out for you as, uh, as the highlight for Na'Vi in the year? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it has to be the blast win earlier in the, in the year when Electronic took over as IGL. You brought in SDY. Electronic had one of his best tournaments of the year, or in a, in a long time, I would say, as an IGL. SDI, SDI coming in, playing quite well, and he, we kind of thought, could this be it? Could this be the solution? Does Blade, has he figured it out already? Is he is he doing it again? But we saw the second half of the year was more tumultuous, and the whole, is he is he in, is he out with SDI, it didn't really work out. And of course, they're in a very tough situation on multiple, on multiple ways. So uh, I think for them to be second and to be like this consistent, going to playoffs consistently, it's a, it's a really big feat. I think for me, the one of the other highlights would be the second place at the major. I mean, I think sure. like especially because I remember like heading into the final, I just didn't know who was going to yeah, win. Like, yeah. Navi really did look that dominant that they might just be matching FaZe at that point. Obviously, story was different. FaZe ended up winning and that's why we were here, right? But uh, that that was a big highlight for me from in terms of Navi and then Cologne final that, that also speaks for itself you know it's just basically two rounds that separated phase and and navi having a really massive win this year you know so like that again i think that that discussion was fairly obvious that navi was just the second best team of the year and we do need to talk about g2 here the uh, bookends of the year katavita and uh, uh, the blast world final so uh, let's jump into uh, the video for g2 yeah! Crazy. They're really building the story. Free aim to the top of the barrel on open. Just enough. To As he does. Look at this. Freebies. Oh, Hunter. Oh, it's clean. Know where he's at. A peek out with the aim for. Sees him up in heaven. Ready now. Another team that uh, underwent a bit of a roster change in the in the year, and one that was uh, highly criticised, I would say. Uh, so yeah, congrats to G2 for, for making the top three, considering, uh, and be interesting to see how they can go into 2023. We have a lot of really big names uh, to look forward to this year and see where everybody's at. But uh, yeah, G2 chopping and changing so much definitely made things harder for themselves, and uh, not making it to the second major of the year. That one uh, really stung, right, bro? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think because of that result, particularly, people are like, how can they be in the in the top three? But when you look through the whole year, they, they did have, starting off Katowice, Grand Final, uh, a couple of good playoff runs, and in the end, winning Blast, which had all of the good teams, right? Uh, so you have to give it to them. Like, they did have a decent year in the end. They managed to salvage it. Yeah, um, uh, Striker, I'm going to let you finish, but uh, we're going to throw it over to Parla, who's uh, got something in store for us. We good? Amazing. All right, HLTV Award Show 2022. What is going on? No. All right, I'm here with a very special guest and a very honored guest tonight, Finn Carrigan, two awards mate. How is it to be receiving them on this very special occasion? I'm expecting a third one as the top one player in the world. So um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Obviously, super happy, super stoked to be here. And um, yeah, it's a great show. Uh, it is. Like, the vibe in here is incredible. Is everybody having a good time? Yeah! What, what's going on with Henry G? Has he been heckling people? He, I mean, he, he seems a bit untamed right now, Finn. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's true, man. Uh, I'm getting robbed here if I'm not top one. <laughs> Finn, um, 
Yeah, you're, you're up for some other awards today. It's a crazy occasion, first of its kind. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to everybody watching at home, the FaZe fans also? Yeah, and the Twitch says, let's see it. Pala, 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 pala. Everybody, everybody, give it up for one of the best of all time. It is Carrigan! <laughs> Am I still live? I'm not, right? I'm still live. All right, many, I'm not sure what's happening now because my guest is gone, but I suppose I can move around. Henry, come over here, mate. <laughs> All right? Sort of like a star of the audience as opposed to a star of the show. Don't please injure yourself. This is not a good... Henry, very carefully. There we go, everybody. Give it up for one of the best casters of all time. A legend in the scene in his own right, and he goes by the name of Henry G. Henry, how are you find the event, mate? Looks like having a good time. I'm having the best time. I'm here with my best friends. We're hanging out, we're celebrating Counter-Strike. A game has been very close to my heart, obviously, for a long time. Great to see everyone here enjoying themselves. I know I'm having a bit of fun out here, but at the same time, thanks so much for turning up. Thanks for being you, and uh, thanks to Val, thanks to TV. an amazing night. You guys are killing on the front as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, guys, actually, Henry, thank you so much. Once again, give it up for Henry G. <laughs> but oh my God, can we also get a round of applause and a show of appreciation for Jasmine and Matthew, who are absolutely killing it. I'm looking around now, because I do think I have some freedom to roam. Vladdy, you gave out an award earlier, and yeah, for all of us, it's our first time at an event like this. Are you having a good experience? Yeah, it was amazing. I was so nervous. Yeah, but I made it. You were very nervous, but everyone, what do you think? I think that speech that she gave was phenomenal. Thank you for being here. Uh, we, we, we've also got so many people from different productions and sort of everyone involved in esports. I'm going to talk to an old school friend here, Anton. Um, how's it going, Anton? Are you having a good time at the HLTV Award Show 2022? Yes, super, super good time. Are you, are you drunk enough yet, or do we need some more beers that you're trying to like tactically hide in your thighs? Oh. Uh, what, what? Oh, wow, okay. I don't know if we can see that, but there is a stash of Nordland's gold under that chair. Everyone, give it up for my good friend Anton! <laughs> and now, this next man. He needs no introduction. He is a legend of the game. I know I've used that expression, that phrase, but we are lucky in CS where we have so many special people, so many that have achieved a lot, and this man here is an exemplary example of just that. Everyone, give it up for JW! I mean, for some of, some of the guys like yourself that have been around for so long, you've seen this game and the scene develop, and we're at a point now where we can celebrate. We can have an award show like this, and it's genuine and it's real. What's it like to have seen that development and then be at an event like this, JW? Uh, obviously super fun. Um, as I said in my speech earlier, I think it was long time coming for CS. Um, I think we deserved this long time ago, but now that it's here, I hope we continue doing it. And uh, yeah, with shows like these, maybe it's time to get good at the game again. <laughs> well, JW, it's a pleasure to have you here, mate. Once again, everybody give it up for JW! Right, so I'm just going to go... Uh, Follow my friend. Right now. Follow, can you hear me, my man? My ear, ear. How long do I have I don't left? Think can hear me. We're done, we're good? Follow, boy. Okay, yeah, we're going to go me? back to the desk. The mics are hot, so be careful. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. What an amazing event. I think HLTV, we play all of you, everybody involved. It's been, it's been amazing so far, and I can't wait to see how we cap off. What an amazing night it has been. Thank you so much. My name's Parla. Peace. Yeah, Woo!
I know Simple's got to the game, but uh, he's kind of taken what he said earlier about having the drinks literally, you know? It's good to see people <laughs> on the source out there. Everyone having a good time. That's Dash. Going. That That's uh, Dash is something else. Henry showing a bit of gymnastics there as well. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on out there. But uh, thank you to Parla for getting the crowd riled up, getting everybody in a, in a good mood, a rowdy mood uh, as we proceed forward in the evening. And even uh, we're talking a couple of legends, right? And legends is where we're going next, right? Uh, it makes sense. We're here in Sweden. We've touched on it a couple of times. Right? The first major was uh, here. We had, well, the first three players as far as CSGO's uh, HLTV Top 20 went were Swedish, if I'm not mistaken. Get right and uh, Olaf Meister were in that mix. Yep. And uh, well, we, uh, you know, we, we, we come to a place like this. We get to touch on some of the legendary names, some of the legendary teams. Uh, who stands out for you in Sweden, Striker, as uh, the, top, the top of the pops? You can go back 1.6. You can include Forrest. Well, I'll, the... I'll have to give it to Forrest. Have to give I mean, it to Forrest? He is just the OG, right? Like, I, he is just that kind of like lovable dude on top of like obviously all his accolades and all his history in the game. I, I, it's, you can't beat him. You got to pick a different name here, Prof. What about the mouse lifter? Uh, yeah, well, uh, look, <laughs> I, look. I, I always tell my fun anecdotes about my time with Fnatic. I'm sure people can go and find that everywhere. But Flusher, uh, one of the best to ever do it as well. But yeah. without further ado, let's get into the Legends Tribute video by One Expert. The pressure is mounting on the Fnatic side. Olaf Meister again, here's Bruce up here looking all the way over with the scout in hand. Spot them coming out of squeak door as well, he's here. Smith's looking confused and dazed and it's going to be a follow-up and shot Olaf Meister! You've got to be kidding me, takes down Kirishima as well! The map is called Olaf Pass for a reason. They just lost the round to it and they, they still are not a short deck, they're just getting fired at, they're going down! Olaf Meister, they have no idea! No, I think he's just showing me. There it is. All of my stuff. He's raining down death from above. He has number one player two times in a row. He was the best player on one of the best teams of any era. It'll be desperately hard to hold on to around the world. We go, but the diffuse, the diffuse is coming in. Has it, he's still going. Oh, Olaf just about gets it as the flames come in. Uh, yeah, that, that was so sick. It was like, it was amazing. Ow, oh, the twists brushed aside and Olaf got to do it all day. because he gets that one over the line. Oh, uh, years of experience. A necessary clutch. With FaZe trailing, he gets another. And he's looking for this clutch. The minister, they call him. He walks through the door. Oh, and no, he got it! A robbery from the Maestro. Four kills in with only 10 HP. I just say, all of Meister, I love you. Get right, the early days of Counter-Strike, he was just an absolute beast. Get right, the Swedish legend. It means the world to me to just be standing here. I'm just very happy that still people are supporting me. He was able to win everything for Net for like two years. Well, it's never been the same since then. Now, now people don't even like lurkers. Get right coming up from behind, but he's also alone in a one on two. Throws out another grenade here, gets up another kill. Is it happening again? Pronax is alone. That bomb is in the middle of nowhere. He's gonna have to sit down at the oh, he goes down. Get right clutches it. It happens again, ladies and gentlemen. 16 13. It finally happens. A legend no one will ever forget. Yeah. Get right, last man standing device. That draw speed is going to go down. 1v2 running up here. E250 out, jumping and shooting. He gets one more kill. Looking for it. He's got him hunted down. Time is up. Oh my god. Get right, you're going to be kidding me. He gets the last kill in one second left. I'll do the words for him. The man is a legend. Whether we see him again in the access or not, everyone here on your feet. A standing ovation. Ladies and gentlemen, get right! Nice little tribute there to uh, celebrate some legends of the game. Uh, great to see 
uh, Olaf and Get Right there getting highlighted in that moment. And we could even see more of them right there in case you, you didn't get a big enough picture of him. Snacks, you know, shaking his head with the Olaf boost coming through. But this is the thing, right? You, we, we, we're not going back in ancient history. This is still, you know, pretty recent as far as Counter Strike's concerned. If you're old right? enough, then you're not, I guess. I was getting owned by them. So for me, it feels like just yesterday. Probably right? like 20% of the viewership right now has watched those games live, but okay. Well, maybe they should go back and watch them, right? Give a bit of respect on the name uh, because they, they definitely uh, handed out a lot of destruction in their time. And uh, well, we're getting towards the tail end of the award show here this evening, lads. We've got two more awards to give away. Women's Player of the Year as well as Player of the Year following that up. And uh, well, this is where we get to uh, the, the hot end of things, right? Uh, we, we've got the whole three players left over. We know who they, they're going to be, but in what order? We still have to determine who that's going to be. And that's going to be uh, happening very soon, as well as after it's all over, uh, there's going to be the uh, top 20 frag movie. So there you go. You can see if you've been keeping score, uh, coming up next will be Women's Player of the Year. Now, uh, we, we already gave the trophy away to Enigma Galaxy, and uh, two of their players, Vilga as well as Anna, uh, are in, in the category to potentially pick up this trophy, as well as Olga uh, over there from Fury of Female. So this is going to be a hotly contested one. And uh, well, you know what? Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Nice! Good job, everyone. Thank you very much, Chad. Yes, we have to talk about the Women Player of the Year. Now that sanity has been restored in this assembly, we've had Pala and the shenanigans. We've had a blast from the past with the legends, but stay right back in the present. We talked about the women teams. We mentioned Nima Galaxy, CLG, F oh, Furia Female as well. But in terms of players, we have some very serious candidates. And when you look at the numbers, they're actually stratospheric. Some of the numbers, Anna, for example, like they don't even make sense. I'm talking plus eight KD per map she plays. What the hell is going on? It's actually mind blowing. Anna, an incredibly dominant author as well. But I just want everybody here right now to give another round of applause to all the lovely women we've had up on stage and their incredible speeches, reiterating, reiterating, there we go, why it is so important for us to give these recognition, this award to all of the fabulous women. So please, a round of applause for all the lovely ladies we've had up here tonight. Now, obviously, the guys up there in the glass room did mention we have Anna, Olga, and Vilga. Vilga, a wealth of experience, by the way, playing since 2008. No doubt an inspiration to many women out there as well. So to be able to really bring in any and every player that you are given, teach them everything you yes. know, see the very best in them, and all of that potential is no easy task, and yet, She's been able to do it, winning back-to-back -back tournaments with her team. Very important profiles indeed. Um, thank you again for that experience that you're displaying to the rest of your team. That matters a lot. But now it's time to find our guest announcement. And it's a special moment for me. We've already mentioned him as well. Someone who wears his heart on his hand, on his sleeve when it comes to Counter-Strike. The uh, two times HLTV best player in the world and someone I'm very honored to consider my friend. Please welcome on stage, Get Right. <laughs> or you know those kind of stuff because like snacks we took it over and Pasha great English as always and the yeah, rest of the people I don't remember everyone but still it is what it is either way it's a great honor to be standing here for in front of everyone and it's a great honor to be you know giving out this award because this is something very very serious and something we need to take more prestige into because woman has hasn't been given the highlight as we should be given to so it's I'm very thankful to actually be giving out this award tonight So to just like skip all the attention between there, to just give the award away, basically. So for the female player of the year goes to... Anna. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, I didn't prepare anything on paper, but I'm going to try my best and say it from my heart. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to uh, HLTV for giving me this opportunity to be here in front of you, all of you guys. Uh, I hope with this trophy, with this award, I can inspire more female to join this scene, this incredible scene. And I hope I can do it uh, uh, this year and my, uh, my full career. Second of all, I want to thank my, my teammates um, for making me a greater player and a greater person. Thank you, guys. Uh, I want to thank my uh, organization, Mo and Christoph. Thank you so much for believing in me. Uh, obviously, my family and my friends. And uh, last of all, I want to thank ESL and DreamHack to keep my dream alive. Thank you, guys. together and I just hold back and playing with let this round slip on one versus told her she's low on health And another congratulations to Anna there on picking up the title of uh, Women's Player of the Year for 2022. Now, something unique about this category, uh, which is a little bit contrary to the one we're going to have coming up next, is uh, she's the only Orpa out of uh, the bunch, right? And and that's quite interesting, Prof. The other two, Vilga and Olga, are, are both rifleless. Yeah. So something a little bit different in the water over there. Yeah, it's uh, interesting to see, but I, I definitely think Anna's highlights have made rounds. I think people have noticed some of the clips and, and, and rounds and highlights that she managed to pull off. So that, that's just amazing to see. Yeah, for sure. Uh, look, uh, I've been watching a bit more of this, uh, as I mentioned, right? I see an Australian in the mix. I start paying a bit more attention. <laughs> but one of the names uh, in the ESO Impact recently, not one of the names we're about to highlight here, but uh, I did notice an individual called GFI. I was watching some of her matches and uh, playing for uh, from Malaysia. I was like, okay, yeah, this is this is looking good. So, well, let's get into uh, uh, the reveal here to see who came second and third on the lovely list we've got in front of us right here. We hopefully can bring that up for everybody playing at home. It was uh, Vilga and of course Olga as yeah. uh, the the other two individuals. Uh, and here you go. There it is for everybody. The graphic makes it a lot easier than seeing my voice. Anna taking first. Olga coming in second, and uh, in that third spot will be Vilga there. Well, let's jump into the highlights for Olga. Well, uh, that's the second place right there of Olga. And uh, we got one more. One more highlight to show everybody at home before we get into the uh, well, the top player of the year coming in next. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Vilga's highlights. Okay, as we mentioned, that's the top three in the category. We spoke about it before when we had uh, the, the Women's Team of the Year as well. And uh, I'm interested to see if it becomes more hotly contested, right? The whole goal of all this is to bring more players in and see how competitive it can get because right. we've had kind of uh, women's dynasties over the years, like Giuliano and Zaz. Well, we know that they moved on. They went to uh, everyone's favorite game of Valorant. Uh, but uh, look, well, it'd be interesting to see if Nigma Galaxy can continue to be this dominant throughout the rest of the year, if Anna can continue on the AWP as she is. So uh, uh, look, uh, we're ready to jump into the commercial, guys. So let's go to a break and we'll be right back. I have very complicated job, but I love simple things so much. One move. One push. One touch. One 
One Love, One Click, One Expert. bitskins.com Well, the moment everybody's waiting for. And if you can hear my voice right now and you just got up to grab another drink, get back in your seat ASAP because we are about to crown the winner of the HLTV Top 20 for 2022. Now, uh, we've already been able to crown 20 to, uh, well, number four. And we've even gone 21 to 30. So, uh, gentlemen, this is the big one. This is uh, what it's all about here, Striker. Uh, history could potentially be made tonight in a bunch of different ways. Uh, you know, we've got Chiro, could be his first. We've got Simple, could be his third. And we have Zywu, who's also with the running for a third. A third. Yeah. So there's a lot on the line here. Yeah, this is uh, this is massive. I mean, obviously, this is... Don't the, spoil it. This is the big one that I'm not going to spoil anything. Not at this point. I mean, it's... We've come all this yeah, way. All exactly. this way. Like this, at this point, if I just spoiled that, uh, whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Exactly. Uh, I think that would be the way to put yeah, it. Yeah, potentially talking about history, like potentially a player winning the player of the year for the third time. That has never happened before. We had we had all of uh, all of once, not twice from the from the video before. Now I, it got in my head. But get right twice, Colzera twice, Simple twice, Zaiwu twice. So two of them are now in the running. So potentially someone winning that third title of the best player of the year. Yeah, and a lot of those that you mentioned back to back as well. Uh, as far as the the two pieces go, one trophy left. Well, let's get over it. Nice work, everyone. I can't believe we've actually made it. We've arrived at our final destination. Time to find the player of the year of the HLTV ranking. It's true. It's the pièce de résistance. It's where we reward excellency. It's where we write stories and narratives and legends. It's always a fight. I think it's probably one of the reasons a couple of friendships have been broken. People are thinking, this guy should be number one. Hell no, he should be number one. It fuels the debate. It's what animates our scene. And the three that we have are excellent, for sure. I feel like these three players definitely don't need any sort of introduction whatsoever. Obviously, we've got the legend that is simple. I want a round of applause, by the way, every time I name one of these players. So come on, give it up. There we go. We've got Shiro, and we've also got Zaiwu as well. This could be the time in which history is made for yeah, the very so. first time ever. We could have a third time best player in the world. You mentioned simple, he's been at the top of the game, the gold for so many years, and he's been fighting against, fighting back against this new wave of talent coming in. We talked about Saibu J generational talent, but hey, who's to say that Shiro hasn't made his place now? Look how much of a voice he's become in his team, how much impact he's had in a couple of tournaments. This is what we need. We need people to challenge Simple. We need people to push him to the limits so that he can deliver. And all of them, they have pushed each other to the max. To the max indeed, but my question to you is, Shiro, heading into this, do you think that there's going to be any sort of like, what do you call it, like that glad feeling, that kind of like, oh my god, I'm amongst the legends, the oh, Zaiwu and Simple. I mean, listen, now it's second time he made it to the top five, yeah. now top three, yeah. back to back. He's establishing himself, he's at the beginning of a long journey, same as Zaiwu, but they can have a look at Simple, who's been on that journey for years and yet still to fight against them. So there's a whole lot to be done. And now, when we talk about greatness, we also need a great guest. And for that, we've mentioned his name already, a two-time major winner, 2015 best player in the world. It is my pleasure to introduce all of my stuff. Thank you. 
Hello everyone. Uh... <laughs> First of all, I just want to say it's a big honor to give away this prize. I think this prize is something every CS Pro player is uh, fighting to achieve at one point in their career. And um, just very, very happy to give it away. Uh, second of all, I want to thank HGTV for organizing uh, this big event. I think this is something that we have deserved for a long time and it just shows how far we have come as a, as a eSport titan and as a game. Mm. Mm. I also want to thank everyone who came out to Sweden. i uh, very happy and very thankful for that as well. Um, and uh, to what we all have been waiting for tonight, uh, the Best Player of the Year award. It goes to Simple. All right, all right, all right. Ah, yeah, yeah, all right. Okay, so I have speech as well, but I'm going to speak from the bottom of my heart as well, like you did. But, but it's a bit hard for me, but I will try my best. So, first of all, first of all, first of all, why do you have so low microphone over here? <laughs> That's the first question to Ashel TV. That, okay. Uh, thanks everyone for coming, and thanks Ashel TV for making this of our show because it <laughs> feels like I'm speaking to you, like I'm speaking to a show TV. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, the owners, yeah. So yeah, thank you so much because uh, it, it's actually the most important uh, for eSport to grow. And uh, the way like you did with this ceremony and with this award show is something, it's like the next step, like next level pay. So thank you, Ashel TV, for this. First of all, I would like to say uh, thanks to my team because um, last day I've been in my country 330 days ago and each of my teammates and each of my organizations support me every day. And you know what? Like the first time I, I never understand people who had like depression or they had some sadness and um, 300 days ago I actually felt this. I actually felt that I lost myself. I actually wanted to become better in 2022 and uh, I wanted my team to become better but the war happened and it was very tough for me and finally I understand what it means to be in some depressed situation. So it's pretty tough but it feels like an excuse, right? I mean I feel like uh, I feel everything else's excuses you know we can all of you and me especially we can we can be much much uh, stronger inside because all of you and me especially we can change this world and it's the most important to understand this that people that watching right now and people who are sitting right here all of us can change the future because how can we how can we see different planets or discovered other world if we are still fighting against each other as a humans. So now, now we have the most important thing. Even if you have, uh, if I have sadness right now and my teammates have sadness right now, uh, I'm still really, really proud to be Ukrainian. I'm proud of my country. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of our president that fighting for freedom and for democracy for the entire world. And you know, you know like um, when we were all younger, there was some people about us, they were older, they were, uh, there was our parents or grandparents or older brothers, sisters, and all of them, they uh, always told us some fairy tales. So the main fairy tale is, was about uh, good and evil. When we were all young, we knew what is good and evil. And to be honest, I was evil sometimes as well. 
I actually enjoyed it when I was A10. But now all of us grow up and uh, now we can see the difference between good and evil. And I believe that that eSport community can change this world and just just show the, I don't know, just, just show the world how to be a good person. And I know that eSport is one of the easiest way in the internet to show people how to speak with each other, how to communicate with each other, and how to be better together with each other. So thank you so much for coming today, and Slava Ukraine, Hero and Slava. Yeah, thank you. OG falling back, that's precise, and he gets another over the top. God oh, damn. filthy, absolutely filthy. And to show that kind of growth as a player, while also delivering the, to the level of best player in the world, that's phenomenal. It's right there, and the blast gets oh, it. No. And the, oh, no. <laughs> he eats up the blast bag. The 2v2, hooray. I mean, I have only one name in my, in my brain now. It's going to be simple. The entry getting found. Simple. Simple still very much oh. in the picture. Oh. Since the beginning he played this game, he was so consistent. So simple is yeah, one of the best. Zaiwu gets in, but simple answers. He's probably the only player that He's really like forcing you to play your best game. Simple still there, Simple sees him, he's just staring, and here we go. To close out the series, Simple with a knife. We've seen players improve their individual level. They can drop off and then maybe improve it again. But to say you've done all of that and go through what Simple has, that just puts him above so many other players. Another round of applause there to Simple for picking up the number one player of the year for 2022. And while we've already spoken about the history that's been written here, the first player to have three top 20 trophies. That is absolutely insane. This guy keeps writing history, right? Every time we think, yeah, okay, maybe he's done, he continues to write something new, etch something new in the history books and remarkable stuff, right, Straga? Yeah, of course. I mean, 2018, 2021, previous years there was number one, 2022, of course, it was a bit closer. I think he called it boring last year. I think it was a little bit less boring this year, uh, but of course, like, absolutely deserved. I think one thing that kind of speaks most in his favor, I, we had kind of like a points table for awards. Okay. They, like, players earned over the year and they were kind of ranked based on like how big of a tournament it was and how big of an award he was 50 percent better than zaiwu or shiro in that regard you know he just had he just far out, outweighed them in terms of rewards that he uh, that he um, got for his performances and that kind of like spoke the biggest i mean now he has uh, the most number one medals the most mvp medals the best rating at the big event like the i don't know what is left not much but we also don't see him stopping so uh Bring it forward, yeah, the majors. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Uh, I guess chasing down that, trying to see if he can tackle what Astralis was able to do with the, with this Na'Vi nation. Now, uh, look, he's obviously given us the speech at the start of the year with Katowice during that heartbreaking time, and another one now for everybody to reflect on uh, the words that Symbol has to say. Uh, it's insane just to see the, the, the growth of him over all these years. And again, that reflects on what we've all done. Uh, but we do have the uh, reveal available to show, uh, well, who came second and third. And I think this would be a hot conversation in itself. Uh, so we know Symbol number one, but who's come in in this second and third place is Zaiwu and Shiro to be decided here. And well, Zaiwu comes in second and Shiro there in third place. How close was it, Striker, between those two? This might have been a closer race than it was in 2020 between Simple and Zaiwu. It really was one of the hardest decisions that uh, has really? been made in recent years in terms of second and third place. I think basically like the biggest problem was that Zaiwu just didn't play so much in like deep into events. And so even though he looked better because of kind of his impact on wins and how just how important he is inside of Vitality, he basically was like kind of like the only one who could match up to simple in terms of kills and wins is like one of the one of the key statistics that, that okay. we were using which is 1.10 i know it's not going to say a lot to people but this is very high this is like absolute elite best players you know and and that's something that's you know 
in comparison, for example, Shear was lacking in a, in a bit, and so that's kind of like what shifted it over in, in Zawu's favor, even though the sample size wasn't uh, the, the greatest in terms of Zawu in, in terms of deep into tournaments. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, Shira coming into third place here. He was an absolute monster this year. I think the way that he was able to, uh, you know, have this uh, breakout of attitude on yeah. land, right? That was the thing that was most impressive for me with Shiro for this year, was just the way that in the big games... His major was insane. Yeah. Yeah. I think in the last few months, when you look at the stats, of course, there's not a lot of events there, but the major is there and his average is 1.40. So that is definitely the ramp up and the recency bias leads towards uh, definitely Shiro. I think what we saw from him this year is just, yeah, he's here, he's ready to play, and he's not just just this up-and-coming guy. Like, he is a very stable, consistent topper that carried Cloud9 through some very tough matches. Yeah, we just had on screen just there uh, the Zywa statistics. I completely forgot about his performance of that Pro League. Like, I mean, uh, Pro League is the biggest performance we had all year by far. Like, oh, really? That, is, that okay. is the greatest performance we've had all year because he was, I think it was 1.42 rating that he was at that event. And so, of course, I mean, if you are have the highest peak of the year, that also kind of speaks to you. And that is something that we call also looked at in terms of uh, like who had the better peaks and things like that. And Zywa was uh, was the better in, in that, but of course the stats aren't really helping the, the conversation here, are saying. they? I mean, <laughs> was the highest rated player of the year. I have to, I, I will say that that, that was uh, that was yeah. something that he he um, had going in his favor. Something that kind of like is a is a bit of a factor that from last year that was much less of a factor. I have to say, and I have to have give that props to to Shiro. Uh, last year, like we kind of I don't want to say criticized him, but one of the reasons he didn't make the top three was kind of that a lot of his rating came from survivals, you know, and he still kept that out, kept that like he still was very difficult to kill but this time he had the impact you know on top of it like he actually did step up his game in, in the other direction as well much better fragger than he was last year and that's also the reason why he was you know so close to being potentially second best player of the year sure well uh, let's take a look at a couple of shiro's highlights from the year Fenex holds the line, it's only Shiro left standing, gonna come down to the 1v1, Zolan's gonna swing it, oh, oh Shiro nails the shot! Oh, Shiro! He doesn't need the scope! Round and in the elevated angle, Shiro really doesn't need the scope, he's taking this too far! He's now left at CT, smoke on to win, Shiro spray not connecting, gone for the knife, he's missing it, and finally, on the final take of the wild! with a chance as he presses it. Oh, he saw that sorry. burn. Oh! Shiro with three. Shiro's uh, definitely here to stay and I'm excited to see more of the Cloud9 fans cheering for them uh, as we move into 2023. But uh, we need to play uh, just as much respect as Zywe who came in second place this year and what well, we've got his highlights ready and raring to go as well. So let's check out what Zywe has been up to this year or last year. Zaiwu to the 1v2, and desperation starts to sink in. Oh, Zaiwu! I focus more on myself when I'm playing, so I'm gonna play, I'm gonna take my, my own game. This is either gonna be fantastic or it's gonna be a nightmare for Zaiwu. Oh, oh my god, Christ. what an ace! He took down every single one, and one man army at the catwalk. And now it's on Zaiwu, he's getting caught immediately. Oh. He gets the shot on Slave anyway. And Sip, he just needs another. Oh. All right, well, uh, guess what, gentlemen? We've come to the conclusion of the uh, Angel TV Award Show for 2022. Uh, it's been quite the affair. Started with a DJ set, uh, ended with a, a couple of tears up here in the glass ceiling, room, floor, uh, whatever we're calling ourselves here in the fish tank. But uh, yeah, you just, uh, look, this has been a, a fun evening. We've had some chats, Parler's been getting everybody in their feet. It's great to see so many faces that we know and love out there. And uh, Prof, you played a massive part in making all this possible. I have. Yeah, what, what, do, I, do I have to pat myself oh, on the back? Can you pat you. me? That was can me you, patting you, you on said, the back. I just said all the nice things. It was things. Uh, all, a lot of uh, sweat and tears and anxiety and uh, bad sleep. And, and it's all worked out. And yelling into the pillow, but we, we got here. Okay. And uh, I think people are having a great time, and I'm just glad, glad they're having a great time. That just makes me feel happy, and now I'm happy. There we go. So we stuck the landing strike. Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, of course. I mean, this was so much bigger than last year. You know, last year we were still in that kind of like COVID era, and this is like so much, this is like the return, you know, to, to normalcy, and we kind of like enter that with a uh, big award show, so yeah. happy. Well, I hope it has been well received by everybody at home, and we've had so many nice words from everybody here. Uh, I, I guess Martin's going to be the one giving us the big tick of approval, but we are ready to close things down. So thank you all for tuning in. We're going to throw it over to Maniac and Veracity on the stage for one last time. Man, why are they...
got to say it like that one last time. I'm sad now. The awards have unfortunately come to an end, but I want to give a very big shout out to everybody that has joined us here this evening. A huge congratulations once again to all of our winners, all of our nominees as well, but also all of the legends that we've had as well. I'm looking at you guys right now because you have not only inspired the new generation that is up and coming, for the year just been, but also many years still to come as well. I was watching Goosebumps, watching those highlights. So thank you guys so, so much for doing what you do and inspiring us all here as well. Maniac, thank you for joining me here on the desk. How have you found your first uh, stage hosting experience? It's been quite eventful, honestly. Uh, I started this evening being terrified, petrified to be on that stage, but I've come to love it. I've come to have a really good time. I think we were blessed with great individuals. We've heard amazing speeches here some memories for years to come. So thank you everybody for being here tonight. It's been a pleasure to guide you through these HLTV awards. And now as the tradition will, we're gonna close it with the frag movie of the top 20 HLTV.